Hello, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you're tuning in from across the world. Thank you so much again for joining us in Pantheon. Now, before we get started, I'd just like to know if you're a fan of the Lawful Stupid role-playing games, that you should tune in tomorrow for Hem Laura, starting at, I think, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? 7. Is that right? 7 p.m. Eastern Seven, Standard Time, yeah, and then, of course, UK. you can uh, tune in on Thursdays for... Eroth, which starts at 2 p.m. Eastern well Standard done, they got it right. Is that right? Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. No problem there. But yeah, again, thanks for Tabletop Audio for letting us use this music in the stream. But um, I'll put no further ado on it. Please uh, enjoy the recap from last session. Last time on Pantheon. When a summons is made to all aspiring heroes to attend a festival in Eritrea, thousands from across the land arrive for the week-long event. Two Yaunti, united by their love of scams as much by blood, a retired Roman legionnaire, a cleric of Prometheus, a quiet traveller from the north, and a famous historian whose wits are not what they used to be, all united by fate. Grouped together after presenting their coins marked with a VI, they meet with the Oracle of Delphi with the hope of each asking a single question. Before the Oracle can complete her answering, an apocalyptic siege of the city interrupts them. Barrels of undead are thrown over the city walls, and hordes of undead sprint into the city via the aqueducts. In the chaos, the six strangers whisk the Oracle away, an effort that would have certainly failed if not for the noble sacrifice of the Legionnaire's fellow veteran and longtime friend. The lights within the city are extinguished, and the sounds of the living go silent. Those united by tragedy are tasked with protecting the voice of the gods herself as they swiftly move away from Eritrea, attempting to seek refuge. Will these six, who have been thrust together, learn to work as a team to stay alive and escape the dark figures who orchestrated the attack? Or will the differences prove fate doesn't always choose the heroes the world needs? Find out next on Pantheon. All right, so we join our party having fled from Eritrea as it was consumed by a flood of people of which the party correctly realized happened to be undead. But now on the dusty trail from Eritrea, those Hellenic sands and the shore to your left, the mountains to your right, you make your way along a lone road. You don't see anyone else in sight, but um, it's becoming visible to you that the Oracle you're with, the Pythia and her guard, Aquilus, seem to be um, worse for the wear, quite weary of the travels. Um, and she'll turn to the um, rest of the party and say, It's a good thing I found you all. It's Trust me, I, I know I haven't given you much to trust me for, but I truly believe you were put to, in front of me by the gods. None of you, I think, want this fate. Did any of you come to Eritrea to be a hero? Not really, but I am warming to it. Hmm. Yelling gets a very curious expression at that. I should look to you, Yelling, and say, it is all too common that this fate is thrust upon people and not sought out. You would be wise to open yourself to it. There is something I must do for you all, but it will require some preparation, and you'll forgive me, but the events of the night, they have me quite tired. Yes, I, I understand. I think we're all very tired here. Aquilus, we should look for somewhere to stop. And Aquilus will look up at the card and say, everyone keep an eye out, but we'll be close to the next town soon, Zanopolis. We should probably consider stopping there and getting some, some rest. Do yes, we and we should warn the people there of the uh, incoming forces. I do not suspect that... Uh, what attacked us in Eritrea will be very uh, swift. So I think we have time. Mm. Are you sure? Because they were pretty swift getting into the temple. 
An army is quick when attacking, but transport is another matter. They do not have the training, they are not entirely human. Maybe they are quick, I do not know, but they could also be very slow. They had catapults. At, I mean, I'm no soldier, but they certainly seemed swifter than expected. I wouldn't bet on that if... One surprise attack is one thing, but taking over an entire region without stopping is difficult. But you might be right. I do not know. These things were not natural. I don't expect they'll follow normal military operation. If it makes you feel any better, death is always coming for you. Maybe this is just traveling slightly faster than it would be. Maybe it's the same speed. We never really know. Yeah, you're, you're still not a lot of fun to travel with. <laughs> All right, the rickety uh, sort of cart travels along. It's not long before you see a lone figure approaching from the other side of the road, heading to the direction you've come from. As you get closer and closer, the donkey sort of moves to one side instinctively to let him by. But he looks up at the cart and sees um, several people of those some of them are walking alongside the cart, I believe, but whoever's in, above the cart he seems to be a young boy with sort of um, light brown hair, almost like a strawberry blonde. And he looks from one of you to the left, one of you to the other. He himself has this big backpack on. Um, it looks like he's quite tired himself, a bit haggard. But he looks up at each of you and says, uh, what, what news, friends? What news from Eritrea? I've traveled a long way. I know, I think I lost track of the days. I might be a bit late to Eritrea? Did you guys come from Eritrea, right? Yeah? You? One of the heroes, I assume? Well, that's what I'm hoping. I've got my uh, my sword, I've got my pack, I'm ready to go ahead and kill some monsters, man. Let me at them. I'm, I'm ready. Well, it looks Earth. like your lucky day. We have brought the Oracle to you. Here is the Pythia. And if you're looking for monsters, there's plenty back in Eritrea. Yeah, did, did you say that was the oracle there? Excuse me, miss, you the oracle? And, um, yes, I know it's not very impressive, but yes, she is. That's not a very kind thing to say, friend, about the oracle. She's, she's very impressive, just not physically, which, you know, I don't care about Miss Oracle, of course. Please, um, I, I've traveled a long way. I, I really would like your wisdom, if that's possible. And the oracle will look down with these sort of dark rings under her eyes. And she says, I, I'm so sorry, but I I don't have the energy to do a reading right now on anybody. I I am I am worried about where what will happen here. And as my compatriots say Eritrea, well, I will let them explain, if you'll excuse me. And she just draws her hood up and looks away, sort of hunched over on the cart. Boy, do you have water, food? Yeah, I got some water, I got some food. Follow us to the campsite here. You can talk with her on the way. Uh, once we were... Well, I kind of had it in mind. I really wanted to go and see the heroes at Eritrea. Um, I <laughs> I could come back. I mean, my main reason was that I wanted to see all the thoroughfare in Eritrea. I heard there was a lot of interesting people there. If you're looking for the heroes of Eritrea, you're looking at all that's left of them. Okay, I'm getting a sense that something not too great happened at Eritrea. How, how quick are your feet? Pretty quick. That's what I pride myself on. Perfect. Um, if you want to be the hero you were clearly setting out to be, um, perhaps you can serve that purpose in the Oracle here uh, by spreading the news that there was an attack on Eritrea. Um, my friends here are not exactly being clear with their message. Yes, I mean, I... It's certainly not the party that, ex that you were expecting waiting for you. Well, what do you want me to do? I mean, if that's the Oracle, as you say, then I'm happy to help any way I can. But what do you want me to do? Do you know how to play messenger? Do I know how to carry a message from a town to a town? Yeah, who doesn't know how to do that? And well, if your feet are quick, I suggest you do that quickly. Um, I suspect not anyone else knows what's going on in the city, and if more people are heading there like you, they're, they're going to be very surprised, and not in the good way. Larkin, this man was late to the Festival of Heroes. You really think he can remember the 
message to send. Barrels of bodies were thrown at Eritrea. Don't go there unless you are battle ready. Seems like a simple thing, maybe, to remember. You have a point. I'm just saying, if he wants to be a hero, that's how he can start. He might remember the message, but he'll probably get up, get there late. Okay, uh, let's just chill out with the late thing, okay? I It's a one-time thing. It, I don't, I'm not too great with dates and things, but, you know, I, I, I can use a sword and stuff. I'm, I was going to go to Eritrea, and it sounds like you guys don't really know what's happened there. I, I'm just being what's kind. What's your name? It's uh, Ridius. Ridius? Uh-huh. Pretty ridiculous name. <clears throat> Ridius, we don't have time for your ambitions right now. We just barely survived with our life. We're heading to Xenopolis. Come with us or do your own thing. I don't care. I start to make the donkey move. Hmm. If you don't yeah. trust us, you can go see for yourself. But you won't live long. Hmm. You are quick. But how stealthy are you? Mm, I'm pretty stealthy. I got up on you guys, didn't you? Then by all means, go down the road. All right. I will do. I'll go to Eritrea, and I'll find out what's actually going on there. Good luck. Be careful. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll keep a close eye on all you, though. Dead! See, so you'll sit mm. up. Oh, dead. Oh, dead. i just lay back down again. <laughs> and then nestle into his beard. They can't all be dead. For God's sake. I'm going to go take a look. It's and, your uh, funeral. He's going to just walk off down the road with a bit of a grumpy face. Um, sort of just kicking up dirt as he walks along, heading around the bend to along the coastline. Same road that you traveled on. As soon as he's safely out of distance, I sort of want to like collectively look at the party. Take a moment. And go, um, now that he's gone, I, s I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, yeah, Ling and I are usually better at being subtle, and I don't think it's in our best interest to just announce to anyone on the road that we're traveling with the Oracle in a wagon or anything, so perhaps we mind our words. I like that advice. So that is a fair point. What yeah. are we doing? We are going to the next city, and what then? We're going to warn them? We're going to save Greece? Go home. Where is home? Argos sort of regrets saying that as soon as she says it. <laughs> oh, Lord, again. Um, well, it's still a good question. What is... We can't just drop off the oracle um can we why not we'll part ways Aquila says when the time is right for the now the oracle needs rest and i trust you all to stay with the oracle and i while this happens yes, we'll part ways not... when the time is ready so we would you know, not like the uh, oracle to get tired while we flee the enemy mm. right how long is it until they get to the city can we do it before nightfall? Um, you're in currently, uh, I should have, sorry, you put in a bit of context around mid-morning at this point, having traveled through the night along this road. So we're in sort of early to mid-morning. Um, so Aquilus will say, yes, uh, Xenopolis is not a reputable town. It's quite a uh, shithole, if you don't mind me saying, but it's only around another, he just looks to the cliffs as though he knows the area well and say, it's around another two hours away. Are we headed away from Argos for perspective or, um, or towards? No, towards Argos, yeah, definitely. There's only one sort of passing between your beer, the island you're on, and mainland Greece. Okay. And you're on the way to this passing, pretty much. You say that we've well, traveled all for the night. So obviously, I've slept, so would that be a long rest for me? Um, if you wish to have slept, you can do, yeah. yeah um, I wouldn't have called it a long rest, though. You got out of Eritrea at what? Mm around midnight to 1 a.m. And it's like 7 a.m. now, we'll do the exact times for you. So yeah, I guess you could have a long rest. Um, but yeah, okay. Is anyone else resting, just so I know? Or... Uh, Yelling probably had have rested at some point. Maybe not a full one, maybe a short rest. 
I commend your uh, ability to get a good night's sleep after the events of yeah night. <laughs> yeah very, very I would active. I would say we took turns short resting at the very least I wouldn't have trusted uh -huh. one of both of us to be asleep yeah sure I mean for the for the purposes of it being on a cart thanking glasses a short rest so that's not a problem okay. yeah um at this point I'd like to check on the check on the mule and make sure it's okay after like pulling us for nine hours yeah sure again you know it's generally used to this sort of it's a beast of labor so it's quite used to this kind of hardy work although it does look a bit tired it's it is still plodding along both of them yeah well i um <clears throat> i don't know if this beast will get us much further than the city but we should be okay if we make our way there mm. so yeah um as the sun starts to grow a bit higher in the sky um, you'll find the coastline sort of turns inward towards the north and there merging over the sky over the horizon you'll see several sort of lower down buildings scattered um, and then growing more concentrated as the road winds and bends into what looks to be um, a small town aquilus will just look to the rest of the party and say xenopolis watch your purses lots of cutthroats and thieves around these parts <laughs> and they serve you um yelling and locking as he says this apologize can you have him repeat that um do his, they... sorry go ahead zach one second people of xenopolis who do they serve xenopolis serves chalkis the nearby city it's in their jurisdiction after the war that is and then before he said that there's plenty of cutthroats and thieves around Xenopolis. Um, Kylie, that's what he said. Mm, I'm just gonna look oblivious as possible. We'll have to be careful then. Hmm. Yeah, going into the town, it's strange. It's like, um, if you can imagine a town that's been absolutely devoid of any sort of infrastructure, but is obviously still inhabited. The only main thing that seems to have been kept here quite nicely is the large road that just leads straight through the town to the other end, and then just carries on to Chalkis. But either side, dotted around, there are large buildings, some of stone, some of wood, some with their shutters closed, with lights on on the inside, but um, many of them just with destroyed windows, nobody um, noticeably occupying them. As your cart sort of rolls through, you'll hear several shutters slam closed from second story windows until people start peeking out at them at you. So Aquilus jumps off the cart and draws it to a halt. Xenopolis. Herodotus will sit up, yawn and stretch. Hmm. Oh good, we're here. Yes, we can uh, split ways now. Uh, the Oracle is as safe as can be. I don't know about that. This place looks like... <laughs> kind of looks like it might be worse off than what we just left. It, at least it is not a battlefield. But, um... Not yet. Uh, Yelling will I... kind of try and... Sorry, Yelling will just try and pull Larkin aside if she can. Mm-hmm. I'll go along with that for sure. Aquilus, um, <laughs> is there any place that we could gain some rest? Sorry, I didn't thought you were... Yeah, done. sure. <laughs> um, Aquilus, to look around, he's, he'll say, oh, well, being from Delphi, I wouldn't feel too right putting the Oracle in any of these, these shacks, these shanties. There is a temple here. Seems to be quite more well kept. Saw it on my first passing. We could ask for board there. I'm sure they'd oblige, given the company we keep. And he'll look to the oracle before offering a hand to her uh, to step her down from the cart. I know you're all very eager to leave us behind. I can see that. May look to you, um, there, pro it. He says, "I ask you to bear with us for a day or so more." I can't alone protect the Oracle if this happens again, and you were invaluable before. If it's money or after, or if it's gold, drag me. I'll make sure you're compensated. At least stay with us till mainland Greece, and then you can be on your way. It's in the same direction anyway. This Very will well. This will catch Yelling's attention as she's scurrying Larkin away. Just kind of look over her shoulder. Uh, how much drag me are we talking about? 
Mm. The Oracle of Delphi is plentifully, is supplied with uh, very plentifully by the uh, powerful figures of Greece. Mm. I can't offer a certain drachmy number if you're looking for it, but handsomely compensated, I will repeat. Your larkin. Come here. I'll kind of crouch over and listen. I, uh, I think it's best we avoid uh, them parsing the family by any chance. I know they can fend for themselves, but I don't really want these people having to fight them. What, what do you mean? If we parse them, they'll think maybe this is some sort of score and that we're distracting them or something. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Dion can probably be pretty confused by this. Yes, um, and we don't want them doing anything that could get them in trouble. We need to keep them away from them to try and divert the cart if it goes anywhere close. I think we avoid home as much as possible for the time being, yeah. It's probably smart. At least until we're alone. Right. At least until we know who to trust. All right, All right. time to continue operation that Oracle is the best human being ever. Also, you're, you're right about what you said earlier before we all uh, slept. She's not always entirely honest. She makes things up. At least that's what the box says, you know, as much as we believe it. And then I'll head back towards the group. At this point, the oracle sort of, um... no, go ahead, Zach, please, Antigonus. Just sleep on right. How are you doing here? You've got a bit laggy. Yeah, can't quite hear you there. Antigonus will come back to you, though. As, um, the Oracle, as I say, I think I um, picked up most of what you were saying, is she seems sort of steeped over and struggling to carry herself, but Aquilus is there to lend a hand, sort of an arm around her shoulder and steadying her as he moves more into the town. I'd be walking with them. Mm. Herodotus has got no plans to abandon them. <laughs> Uh, who, what people are in the immediate, immediate vicinity besides our party? Not a soul. Although you have the strange sense that it is inhabited, but no one's making themselves readily visible to you. Uh, Aquilus, is the city always this abandoned? City's always suspicious. Most people here are sick, elderly, infirm, exiled, criminals. See a man in armor coming through, they scurry away like cockroaches. You can say Eat this in a way <laughs> to, um, like, as though he's announcing it to them. Well, I think we should warn whoever's in charge of the uh, incoming danger. There is nobody in charge of Xenopolis. It's a derelict town. There's no magistrate here. No guards. It's just a forgotten place. When in Greece, no? <laughs> mm. As you say. What about in the temple? There's no one in an authoritarian position in the temple. A priest or something. There is a priestess. So I've heard a very valuable figure to the town, quite well liked by the people here. But Perhaps does she command authority? Rich. Maybe not. But you're right, as you say. Where do you plan to go? Um, in mainland Greece, past here? If we're just passing through, that's one thing, but what's your, your end goal before leaving us, Aquilus? Hmm. He'll um, look down to the Oracle, um, and he'll look back to you all. Um, he'll seem to hesitate, sort of, with his words before he just opens his mouth and breathes out a heavy sigh. I had time to talk with the Oracle as we traveled, and... Although she is tired, she is of the thought that what happened in Eritrea was an attempt on her life. And so it's most likely it will happen again where she goes. So putting her in a town 
is risking the lives of all the town. Probably be safer to put us somewhere far away. Who would be motivated to kill the Oracle? And that is the uh, million drachmi question, isn't it? If well, she, she has to have some it. idea. She's an oracle. Mm. It's not as simple as looking wherever you wish. What the gods choose to show her and choose to hide from her, who knows why? Because they're the gods. Mm. Whispers to Larkin, maybe the gods want her dead then. Sounds like somebody pissed off the almighty deities. Hmm. But with this, he'll just keep walking through the town, and, and it's the same thing over and over. You see, sometimes see like somebody poking their head around a corner and instantly scurrying away, or somebody crossing in front of you between two buildings, somebody on a roof at some point, somebody shutting shutters on a second story window like before. How no far mm -hmm. is the next city or town that we would be traveling to towards mainland Greece? Um, I guess you traveled here, so you might know, you might have a rough idea of where that is. Um, so it's around the same distance between Eritrea and Xenopolis is the next town over as well. So this so one's like a, sort of like equidistant. Town. How long did we travel from Eritrea to here? Around seven or eight hours. Okay, so like not even a full day. Case. Yeah. And what time of day is it currently again? It's like mid-morning -morning around 10 a.m. All right, so um, now that we're here, are we just passing through or are we at least going to explore? Sort of to everybody, as we were like meandering through these streets and being <laughs> avoided by everybody. Well, we didn't all get the chance to take a nap on the cart, so I think it might be nice to get some rest. Uh, yes, let's go. Don't forget, she traveled very far. Uh, let us go to uh, this temple, rest. Maybe if anyone wants to do anything in the meantime and uh, set a time that we will meet up and leave. Sure. Uh, then to the temple. Very well. And um, Aquilus would lead the way, knowing where the temple is. But it's not long before you emerge into sort of an open space agora at what you imagine to be around the center of town. And there, um, sort of propped up on a large stone pedestal, is the only building in town that seems to have any kind of common maintenance put into it. It's polished stone. It's um, lovely sort of smooth marble with um, not just pillars, but statues in the pillars of different sort of um, sort of um, toga clad women. But at the very forefront of them is a statue about human size of a goddess, what you'd know to be Athena with her spear and her sort of helmet propped up on the back of her head as she looks down, casting a welcoming look to the town. So I see that uh, the uh, patron of Xenopolis is the same as Athens, no? <laughs> mm. It would seem so. Yes. Uh, which one is the uh, high priest or high priestess? Who is in charge? Best way to find out is to go in and ask. I know she's a well-respected figure, but I don't know her name. Preywood's going to march in. <laughs> sure. Meanwhile, let's just try and get Zach's mic working. Are you working, Mike? Uh, Zach? Nope. Uh, not quite yet, there. Zach. If you yeah, if you leave the call quickly, come back in, then we'll reset cameras. <coughs> I mean, am I carrying on? Uh, no, just wait on it. Wait, wait a second. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, just Amy will need to turn hers off and on again. Oh. Amy, turn your video off. There we go. I mean, he's not back yet, so I can... <coughs> How's it going, Twitch chat? <laughs> uh, Harry, would we... Um, I mean, how close are Yelling and Larkin to their home? Roughly... Um, roughly... Hang on. <laughs> I'll do it the, uh, the fun way. You are around about. What's that? <laughs> Test your mic. Google Maps. Yeah, Wait, I'm getting muted. muted. I can't hear you. It's not letting me do it, though, unfortunately. Uh, it's about 200 kilometers, 200 and something kilometers away. Okay. okay. If we come close to it or uh, pass it in some way, um, 
let us know. Mm -hmm. Sure. How are you doing that, Zach? You want to try it? Now can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yep, sure. Okay. So let's okay. jump straight back in, not waste any time. Pray that you were marching up the steps there. Aquilus yeah. at this point, effectively carrying the oracle behind you now. I swooped his left forearm underneath the back of her knees and I scooped her up and he's holding her close to his chest. And Aquilus is quite a large guy and he's wearing a very distinct type of armor. And as he marches up the steps, there's people um, around the sort of columns there. You'll see them first, Pray Wit. They look um, infirm sort of weak and scantily clad as though the clothes they've had themselves are rotting off but they hold out their hands to you as you um try and go walk past them up the steps yes what is the fee for entry where why can i go in who are you asking this to the, the people that are right there that are have their hands out sure. um <laughs> they will be honest with you they'll say yeah uh, there's no fee just the qualms for the poor and the sick, please, please, sir. Uh, maybe at a later time, we are in need of money to travel and uh, we have news. I need to go in and I'm gonna march past them. Sure, it's easy enough to find the sort of large entrance to the building there, the uh, temple. As you go in, it's sort of well and warmly lit with, although it is very dark inside with no natural light as, as other than what comes through the door, the several braziers lit around the, um, the sort of perimeter of the large open room. You'll see a large chest of very ornate design at the very back. And in the center, there's sort of a, a recess in the earth that two several steps go down to sort of a, um, sort of like a inverse dais into the ground. But uh, kneeling around, there'll be several white and blue robed women sort of um, tending to the plants on the inside of the temple, talking with one another. And they look to you as you enter, pray with. I'm uh, pray we're just going to shout over everyone who is in charge here. I need to speak with someone. Um, one of the priestesses um, sort of separates herself from the others and looks to the rest, uh, looks to you, pray and says, I am in charge here and I thank you to keep your voice down. This is a place of worship. Right. Well, <clears throat> I raise my voice because it is a warning voice. There is an army in Eritrea and it is not friendly. Uh, what is your name? It's Hesia. Tessia. Tessia, I feel with me the Oracle, the Pythia. We are escaping Eritrea, which was attacked by some undead army, some uh, soldiers that were raised apparently. Is this some um, attempt at humor? You've brought- You can Pythia. ask the Pythia. You do not, you trust her, no? I do, but I don't believe she's here. Uh, pray what we'll gesture behind him for Aquilus to approach. <laughs> and as though, like, at the perfect timing, Aquilus will sort of turn sideways to make sure he doesn't bump any sort of head or foot on the sides of the large stone entrance to the temple, and he'll hold the Pythia, who will pull down her hood and look across, and this priest will immediately eyes widen and put a hand over her mouth. If that's, that's the Pythia. Yes, that is what I said. I didn't take your... I, I, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, please, uh, gather uh, anything. Everybody, please, please, welcome, welcome. Anyone who wants to come in, please do come in. Uh, can we get her something to drink? Is she hurt? Yes, take care of the path here, but uh, to make this short and simple, we have a few requests. We need food, we need a place to rest, and then we need you to spread the news to anyone that will listen that we need to leave town. There is an army in Eritrea. At this army, what what do you mean? What arm? Uh, what? Whose army is this? We do not know. You can ask the Pythia. She seems to have all the answers, but not the uh, energy to answer. Well, she's obviously welcome to rest here. We we can we can set up some cushions in the antechamber. It's not really a place of beds or anything, but we can do our best. Please, please, please. And she'll go over to Aquilus, put a hand on his shoulder, and lead him off to a side room. Uh, pray we will turn behind him and uh, kind of wait expectingly for the rest of the party to come into the temple. Herodotus will be outside, like handing out gold to the peasants. All right. Uh, <laughs> yelling, uh, 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 yelling will be with the uh, people outside. How many beggars were there? Mm, I'm going to say about eight. Okay. Um, I will <laughs> give it Larkin. Did you say you went inside? Uh, no, 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 I'd, I'd be, the minute the, the four people were 
asking for qualms and money for the poor is where I would have stopped. So there's eight of them, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, various descriptions, old and infirm, one missing a leg, one much younger than the rest, perhaps a boy of around 10 or 11. Yeah, I'll hand out a gold piece to each. All right, subtract eight dragon from your own metry. There are eight gold pieces. Are, are you guys okay here? And which one do you address the question to? Uh, the little one, the boy. The boy will nod, and he'll just have a sort of sullen look on his face. Dark rings under his eyes as he sort of um, shields his face from the sun while looking up at you, as you're silhouetted. Uh, we're, 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 we're fine. We're scraping by, as always. M- Mummy says to come here and try and make some money most days. Most days I don't do a very good job of it, though. Well... Here, take this, um, Mark and we'll hand over five drachni to the boy. Um, kind of... Kind and do you of... Know? Kind of just... slightly five. Um, okay. I, um... There is a place you can go if you need. Um, and she will explain where she comes from. I would do it, but I don't actually know how That's to describe fine. how to get there. Um, yeah, I get you. Um, he'll hold out his hands in sort of a cupping motion as you drop five drachmi in it, and his eyes light up with the same colored gold that is currently in his hands as he looks at you and says, I, it's, it's more than I've got in a whole week. <laughs> oh, don't forget that one. That was my one, boy. Yeah, and you'll take yours as well. He's like <laughs> beaming at both of you. With like, hand the eye with, with like a shaky hand. <laughs> we'll take if you go there, we'll take care of you um, and bring your family if you have any others. And she will then proceed to give one to all the others. Mm-hmm. So that is yeah, sort of collectively. Five plus I think seven. We split it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And as you approach the older man, he'll um, he'll take the coin and, and as you explain it to him, he'll say, "Yes, yes, I've I've heard of this little group of settlers in Argus before." You belong to this little group, do you? Yes, I do. Mm. I've heard Argus is full of murderers and prostitutes and thieves. That's what we want people to think. Mm. I'm too old to travel now, but perhaps the boy and his family will go. I'll stay here. I'll try and come back. I appreciate your kindness, but there's really no need. Meanwhile, Larkin sort of crouched next to the boy, showing him how to use her sling. I mean, like, you gotta be smart with it. And, like, sh- shooting, um, just, like, it, it often in, like, a scattered direction, possibly at Antigonus, just for fun. <laughs> All right, okay. When you <laughs> say shooting is... a sling, have you got, like, a Dennis the yeah. sling? <laughs> I have it as my we- one of my weapons, so yeah. I think okay. I'll, yeah, I'll allow it. Don't expect it to do any damage, though. <laughs> I, guess the D&D... I don't. All right. I, okay. I definitely don't. But I, the, I'm also class- showing somebody very uh-huh. probably it's not classical very classical description of a sling, though, right? <laughs> you know, like yeah, a spinning. Yeah. <laughs> not, not no, no, l- l- like the, the slingshot. slingshot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> do you know how much a carriage or something would cost? I know you might not, but... Uh, I'm not, I don't have that knowledge, I'm sorry. I'm unsure. I'll come back, I promise. Mm. But meanwhile, um, inside the temple, is anyone else, I, I should ask really what um, um, Antigonus and um, Kara are doing, really? Antigonus has walked one step into the temple and feels incredibly self-aware and worried he hasn't been back in an athenian temple in quite some time so he's clutching his holy symbol trying to hide it a little and looking around it's just like literally one step in and not moving any further just trying to listen both of the other conversations oh you are approached by a young priestess though who carries in her hands a bowl of red liquid and she offers it to you with both hands sort of a wide bowl which also tips side to side a little bit of dropping on the floor she holds it up to you and says please please I, I understand you've had a hard journey. Um, <clears throat> I have, yes. Thank you. I'll take a sip from it and smile mm-hmm. at her and give her a, an offering, a, a copper piece. Mm-hmm. It's sort of a very bitter wine that she's giving you, but she does take the piece of um, gold that you've given her and she sort of pockets it, saying, I'll make sure it goes back to those hungry in town. If you need to rest anywhere, please do make yourself at home. The priestess has told us to 
make sure you're all most welcome. Uh, yes, I'll make myself at home. Thank you. And then he just doesn't move and stays. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sure. She just backs off awkwardly at this. So it's keeping an eye on you as you still just stand there statuesque. Um, but she will go over to you as well, Prairie, while you're in the temple and sort of offer you the same. Please drink. Yeah, and pray will just uh, make like a soldier. He's going to very quickly scarf down something of a meal, combining the, the bad wine he, mm. she's giving him and, and a few uh, basically trail mix that he has and just kind of scarf it down real quick. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All uh, right. I would have followed the Oracle in, so I'm mm. with pray as well. Sure. Well, in that case, the same does happen to you as well, Cara. Um, at this point, you've got sort of a few priestesses just fawning over you, each of you just offering you um, like some olives, some dried meats, bread, that type of thing. Um, whatever you can sort of take and eat, they've uh, been ordered to give to you, it seems. Uh, you there, girl, uh, where can I rest? Uh, um... The, the priestess, she's 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 made some um, made some beds up in the antechamber. It's just through here, through this side door, and uh, there's sort of a large square door that's um, right in the side of the temple, and it leads into a sort of an adjoining building um, that's sort of open to the elements in the corridor. There's pillars beside you until you go into a smaller building off the side, and there you'll see Aquila sort of kneeling over the oracle and making sure she's resting before he stands up and turns to you, Prayer. Yes, well, are we all resting at once, or do we want someone to stay awake? I haven't slept uh, from driving the cart, so I think that I would like to sleep. And at that point, I just sort of, like, forget how to walk, but sort of <laughs> mechanically march toward the cushions and then lay down <laughs> very abruptly. I think it would be wise if someone stayed awake to keep watch, given that undead army or whatever it is isn't far behind us, but... I walked all night as well and could really use some rest. As did I. It would seem the uh, UNT hugged the cat, but uh, who are we to complain? Uh, I, you, uh, what, is, what is your name, uh, Woodland? Uh, druid. You appear to be a druid. Me? Yes. <laughs> Kara. Kara, would you uh, be so kind as to ask the uh, UNT to keep a watch while we rest. Uh, where even are they at this point? I think they're outside. We've probably, depending on how much time has passed, um, yelling luck probably have, I don't know how much time has passed, but we'd, we'd probably head in afterwards, but uh, yelling would offer to help um, Rodotus up the stairs if mm -hmm. they're just way in basically. Conveniently, as we mentioned, <laughs> probably, probably got our hands in my pockets. <laughs> <laughs> you need a hand up the stairs, there, Herodotus. Yeah. Oh, oh thank yeah. you, dear. That's all right. <laughs> and uh, thank you for uh, being so generous back there. Oh, I try to do my bit. Mm. It's uh, it's really good of you. Don't ever change. Hmm. I'm gonna give him back his coin with the VI on it. I thought you already did. Did we already do that? Never mind. You have that then. <laughs> right. I'll uh, walk back toward the front as they're coming in. The priestesses here have set up some cushions for us to get some rest. Since you all were able to get a little bit of rest on the road, would you mind keeping a bit of a watch just in case? those things make it here. Yeah, no worries. You did travel a long way to get here. A very long way, actually. Yes, of course. Um, Larkin, do you want to do shifts again? Sure. Yeah, I've got plenty of energy. I can stay up. Yeah, Herodotus, uh, I know you slept on the cart, but do rest. Oh, oh did I? Oh, I, did. <laughs> I, th I think you could use all the sleep you can get. Probably. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. What what were your names again? Larkin. Yelling. <laughs> Larkin. Yelling. I'm Kara. Nice to actually get everyone's name. Oh, what, oh. Pretty, what pretty names. 
If you don't um, mind, I'm going to go lay down. I'll contact Palamedes to ask where he is uh, telepathically. Yeah, sure. Palamedes is currently perched on one of the sort of um, smaller statues which adorn the roof of the temple. Sort of big wide eyes looking in every direction. It sort of contacts you back and says, Just taking in the view there, Herodotus. Lovely town. Nice view of the sea. We should probably settle down here, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, keep an eye out, will you? As always, Herodotus, you get some sleep now. Oh, yes, I'm, I am rather tired. Mm. With that, he'll um, <laughs> just keep turning his head in sort of 360 degrees pans every time, keeping an eye out in every direction. <laughs> Does Antigonus still look super uncomfortable, even though he's laying down in the, this little area now? Um, he's sort of in the fetal position, and you can hear some light snoring. Like, he, he was close to that close to exhaustion so he's really okay cool. okay okay then i shall leave him be so Lena, who's, i guess everybody's settling down to rest the rest of you aquas will just sit on a chair and have his gladius out and sort of balanced on the ground and he'll be spinning it to make a sort of ringing sound in the room as he just sort of anxiously wet awaits watching over the oracle you can sleep too you know i'll keep first watch you did tell them what we saw back there, right? Mm. I've not told anyone. I guess we'll have to do everything ourselves, Larkin. And um, what? Why not tell them? Why not warn everyone? I'm not in the business of warning everyone. I'm in the business of protecting one person. But doesn't warning everyone help better protect her? Hmm. I imagine if their screams await sort of warners, then we'd have more chance to escape. That wasn't my intention, of course, but do understand if you want to tell the denizens of this temple what's coming for them and cause panic, by all means, go ahead. We'll see what comes of it. I think we'd rather call us panic than millions of people die. Millions may be an exaggeration, but... Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> There's like is... 10 people in the town Yeah, the moment I said it, I was like, that's not right <laughs> Panic is temporary, temporary though Millions, the population of Greece <laughs> Millions, yeah I say millions, there's like a sign behind me Population six <laughs> <laughs> Thousands will die <laughs> uh, Yeah, okay um... But the, the panic would be temporary And preparations would probably save more lives. As someone who spends their life protecting someone, I think maybe you ought to be more aware of that. Just saying. You know, he'll just let out a grunt and he'll stand and he'll say, if it's so important to you, I'll go and explain to her what happened. I think that's wise. Mm. He just won't say anything else, but he'll just sort of step out of the room, just pausing one last time to look over his shoulder at the Oracle and then back to you two. I just want to like smile at him as he goes. Like I'll go sit next to the oracle as well. I take it she's asleep anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's sound asleep from the looks of it. Uh, he'll make his way out of the room, back into the sunlight, and um, across to the temple. I want to go sit next to the oracle and Herodotus as well, briefly, and sort of just kind of like plop next to them, leaning back against whatever maybe wall we're near. Um, what's your story, old man? Um, I take it everyone thinks you're crazy, but it's got to be more to it than that. Not oh, strong. I, I have been told that I've lost my memory. I I kind of agree with people now. <laughs> well, what do you remember? Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> Well, that's... I mean, what I remember is the face of a beautiful woman. And that's it. No. Oh. And... Hmm. I just sort of think about that for a moment. Well, how long ago do you think that was? I've got no idea, dear. But man, it's on you. Mm. I'm afraid I don't know that, dear. Well, he'll get he'll get her um, a paintbrush out and just like 
and wet it. <laughs> start, start it. Just get some bit of parchment out and mm-hmm. we'll start drawing and, and pa- or painting the uh, oracle asleep. All right. Um, I'll say make me a mm, drawing. That's an interesting one, huh? Uh, I'll say make me an intelligence check to see how well your memory's working. I say just there's no a flat intelligence roll for it. All I remember is me drawing and stuff. So I've got yeah. ca- calligraphy supplies and stuff. So you've got calligraphy supplies, but there's yeah. much different between that and drawing. So she's she's a stick figure. I rolled a two. <laughs> a two, yeah. <laughs> he draws it's what like, it seems to be two eyes and a smiley face. I get the Do colours wrong <laughs> instead of like paint uh, like the colours she's wearing. I'll just put loads of <laughs> red blotches all about her. <laughs> it looks like blood. Do we? Do you think perhaps you used to be an artist? Looking at this beautiful yeah. drawing. Yeah. I look at it and look at her. <laughs> yes, yes. Do I believe that? I look at her like she's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we're on the same page. <laughs> um, oh, what... oh, it's terrible when I'll switch it up and lob it at someone. Uh, who? <laughs> <Is the question. laughs> I'll just lob it in a general direction. There's a bit apart right, and sure. it'll probably hit someone on the back of the... Yeah. Yeah, just, I don't. Just... I don't mind taking the hit to the back of the head. I'm sat at the front, so. Just... Yeah, sure thing. You, you feel like the slightest little bit of scrunched up paper hit the back of your head. Barely even feel it at all. A chuckle from Larkin, followed by another response to um, Herodotus. Well, if if not an artist, then what what do you do? You can't have forgotten that, can you? Oh, I'm a powerful wizard. Apparently. Uh, uh, apparently. A, a historian um, as well. And starts handing out some notes, or go through his scrolls and stuff. Just, like, look at whatever he's handing me, like like it's Greek. Yeah, there's several um, words in these sort of parchments that uh, don't ring any sort of um, relevance to you, but obviously they put a lot of thought into them. Words like things like um, Iberia. And it goes as far as when you sort of thumbing through it, you'll see words like Iceland and sort of um, Scandinavia and all these sort of strange words that don't really make any sense to you. Do I recognize any of it as like powerfully magical? Like, is is it if if I'm looking to sort of compare my knowledge of magic to this, does it like do I believe him that he's a powerful wizard? Um, are you asking the contents of what's being written or the, the actual physical ba- thing? Ba- based on the contents of what I'm looking uh, at. Do I get the uh, sense that he's actually a powerful wizard? Does this, does, does it match up? I'd roll me Arcana on it. Let's see your knowledge of the arcane. And see if there's anything that would ring true with significance like that. Oh, that would be a solid eight, ten. Ten. Um, there's certain passages which are written obviously on the same day, but they're of completely different areas and different cultures. So. It stands to reason, perhaps, that he had some kind of magical means of transport, at least. But whether or not he's a powerful wizard, or whether or not he just travels really, really quick, you don't know. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. Then I'll sort of just leave it be at that. Get a little fidgety and bored, and start like meandering and roaming around the room, checking things out. Sure. Is everyone? I mean, is anyone just staying awake? I should know, because basically, what I've got the gist of is everyone wants to stay down and rest. Um, let me know if any of you want to do anything on your because obviously you, you all know the mechanics of a long rest ride you get two hours to do whatever you wish with so let me know if there's anything you guys want to do with that as the long rest goes on i think me and larkin are taking shifts well i've just had a long rest so <laughs> yeah you can long rest the game you just won't get the benefits of it yeah long rest. we're just telling you to go back to sleep old man <laughs> yeah <laughs> pretty much sitting there just sketching and writing yeah. and it'll probably be writing like the name or the who, they, who these people worship, what town it is, that sort of stuff. Mm. Yeah, if, sure. If you fail any drawings and they get thrown, Yelling will just probably pick them up, look at them, and then kind of fold them neatly and keep them. Mm. <laughs> just these really <laughs> yeah. cute little stick figure drawings. Yeah. So go ahead and add a, a picture of a woman to your inventory there. <laughs> a dead I will do that. A picture, <laughs> picture of a blooded stick figure. Yeah. But yeah, it's a terrible picture of a woman. A picture of woman in brackets, terrible quality. If you <laughs> probably could sell yeah. for nothing. <laughs> All right. Be so surprised. Aquilus will come back in just before everyone sort of gets the heads down and say, She's been warned, but it seems, and he'll just say this with a bit of smug pride to you two, um, to you especially, uh, Larkin, that seems that she's of the same thought as me. 
No point in panicking the masses. We'll see them coming miles off if they're an army of that size. Ample time to flee. No, no sense in panicking the masses. But you should panic. The Oracle is dead. Huh. Is that so? Just kidding. Just mm. wanted to see. Yes, let's avoid those kinds of jokes right now, if you don't mind. And, um, he'll sort of, he'll just put his hand sleeping. on his gladius and he'll walk over and he'll take a seat on a, on a bench as he sleeps. Oh, what's your name, young man? It's Aquilus. He'll actually be sitting there writing that down. What are you writing? Uh, your name. Why? So I don't forget it. <laughs> what, was it what was it again? Is he always like this? As long as I've known him. It's Aquilus. Oh, by the way, and I hand him my coin. <laughs> I found my coin. Hmm. He'll take it and look at it and he'll put it back in his pocket. That's not... All right. He gets a dirty look from across the room as I'm <laughs> meandering around. All right. So as this um, rest goes on, does anyone want to do anything with their two hours that they have on a long rest? Uh, I'll just Explore practice dancing. All right. Um, where are you going to practice your dancing? Uh, probably in the main hall. If Larkin's going to explore, Yelling will probably do it to keep people's eyes on her instead of Larkin. Roll a performance yeah. check then, please, for your dancing. Ooh. Oh no. Performance, okay. <gasps> Not twenty. Oh, so that's twenty five. Cool, cool. Absolutely. I always I always get it on the dumb stuff, never any cool <laughs> moments of like battle. It's just but this is the this is the cool stuff. The spinning around in intricate patterns, and at every point, someone thinks that this is the, this is it couldn't go any longer. No one can spin this much, but you keep going and swirling around. While um, is it sort of the maracas you have? I think or. Uh, yeah, they're catanets. Catanets, yeah. So they're sort of clicking in rhythm with your spinning. Um, you're doing sort of very intricate maneuvers and your skirt sort of makes a perfect sort of halo around the midriff of your body as it spins with you. As all the sort of priestesses just look on with a bit of wonder and shock at that this is going on. I'm not sure about how to respond, but they definitely have drawn all eyes in the temple to you. Even Herodotus is, is looking. He, he, he gets really excited. Oh, oh, I haven't felt that for a while. <laughs> It's very cute, but unfortunately, Herodotus, she is in a different room than you. Oh. <laughs> almost, uh, almost as if this was planned, but I'm not sh actually sure it was. It's sort of just this natural dynamic. Um, Larkin is exploring while this is happening. Like, whatever, like, little side rooms and doors and, like, drawers. So you can just sort of, like, board, cruise. Not with any ill intent, it would seem, but just, like, yeah, sure, uh, but like the itch to, like, look around and, like, in a new place. Plenty of smaller rooms around the temple. Uh, most of them locked. But uh, the ones that are open, you'll find sort of um, an area for vestments, an area that seems to have um, several places carved out of the floor for ba for bathing, baths and things, although none of them have any water in them currently. And as you walk around, you'll see the priestesses sort of cast you a cautious gaze when they can drag their eyes, eyes away from um, Yarling's dancing. This is an innocent smile. Can I, like, fit in any of the vestments? Can you fit in them? Mm-hmm. Are you trying them on? Yeah. Yeah, if, sure. if, there's, if there's one like easily try onable. Yeah, there's several there, so there stands to reason you'll be able to find at least one that fits you. Sure, I'll like check the pockets and just like see what it's like to be in like a fancy like outfit for a little bit and yeah. continue like it's any like, money in those pockets. <laughs> well, I'm checking the pockets. I don't know. But yeah, in the pockets you'll find a half-used candle. <laughs> sort of snapped off it seems with the wick gone so it's more like a block of wax and uh you'll find uh what seems to be some barley which seems to be in there for some reason interesting mm. just because those will be like nobody's missing these so she'll, she'll pocket them and then in this exploration um that 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 same sort of purpley green like hue to the eyes is going to trigger okay. looking for any sense of magic in this place like uh like that might light up and draw her attention Sure. Um, the large sort of gold-footed chest at the very end of the temple upon the altar is definitely got some sort of aura of magic to it. But do I know what kind? Mm, it's going to be a evocation. Interesting. Um, okay. I'm assuming it's in like a 
big obvious spot, but um, so sure to just make note of that. Mm -hmm. Like, go back to the room and like stay in the vestments and just. I assume like at this point the dancing may be ending and um, unless there's any other like side rooms or like downstairs areas to wander. Mm, that's, that's pretty what much it. That's what she'll be doing. Yeah, yeah, it's all very well kept and all the rugs and sort of the drapes and uh, the plants all seem like in comparison with the rest of the town, just immaculate. Okay. As soon as Larkin finishes, yelling will stop dancing. The the vestments will get like laying over the fitful sleeping Antigonus. Like a little blanket, and then I'll sit down. All right, cool. Well, someone's going to come up to you there, um, Galing, as you are finishing dancing, and um, they'll hold out their hand and they'll give you what seems to be a small clay figure of some kind. It says, "This watch over you. I've never seen dancing quite like that. Please take this. It's the trinket of our appreciation for letting us enjoy it." Oh, um, thank you very much to be a oven hardened clay figure of athena's spear sheila bow <laughs> like, it's like three inches long but it's like a tiny little spear take it um is there a way that i can fashion it to be uh a jewelry piece at all um you can certainly try yeah i'll give it a go are you, I mean, you want to do that now? Uh, yeah. I'll just, I'll, I'll see if I can hook it on, or if it's like right. a smear thing, try and pierce it through maybe something I have. Maybe a sleight of hand check. Okay. You sort of work your magic on this, uh, this very delicate clay piece of uh, figurine. 22. 22, yeah. Um, although it feels like it might snap at some moment, you managed to bore a hole at the very end of it, so you can work some sort of string through it and turn it into a kind of necklace. Perfect. All right, cool. So you can uh, you've got a Athena spear necklace for you there. So, <coughs> all right. So um, unless there's anything else anyone wants to do on the long rest, just pipe up because it's not one you know that's going to be specifically. I'm looking for an order here. So yeah. So pray with uh, for the last two hours of his long rest where he gets to do something. Um, he's kind of been resting with his hand on his on the hilt of his sword the whole time, but he'll he'll get up and. Uh, not saying anything to anyone, make his way just outside the city. Uh, it's a small town, so I'm guessing that's not a long ways, is it? Um, it's a very small town, so yeah, it would only take you around 10 minutes to get through the outskirts of the city. Or the and town. what's the surrounding terrain like? I mean, there's shore. It's typically Hellenic mountainous, so it's quite dusty, quite sandy, um, and very jagged rocks and hills into the mainland, but sort of pearlescent blue ocean, um, which sort of very um be carefully and very pleasingly washes up against the cliffside is there a good place that i can find that just a bit of dirt that i can dig up mm, yeah moving a bit more inland away from the sandiness of the uh very far proximity to the ocean so um you'll be able to move in and find some dirt no problem okay so yeah praywood's gonna dig a small hole um pull out the two statues that he received from antigonus one of him and the other one of karnak of course is his friend and he's gonna take a moment look at both of them and he's gonna put the one of him in the hole of himself and bury that and keep the one of karnak and then go back to town sure yeah and yeah, putting the ground into sort of a makeshift grave of some kind i guess but um yeah it's easy enough to find your way back no problem um you said you were last on the per thing then right um last watch you say the last two hours of the long rest i mean is anyone else who wants to do anything because yeah i would only be wanted to i would ask mm -hmm. what this place is called um what god mm -hmm. they you know they worship and i would like to research the god and see if i can remember it all right, so you know the town's called Xenopolis. It's not that hard to find out from any of the priestesses mm -hmm. there. And at the question of what god they, what you, they worship, they just look a bit confused and just look around and say, it, it, it is a temple of Athena. So I, so my religion check would hopefully see if that was if I if recognize. Want, yeah, you can roll religion to see what you know about Athena. Religion plus six. Oh, 24. 24 is pretty good. Uh, Athena, or Minerva as she's known in Rome, is the Greek or Roman goddess of wisdom and war. Um, generally, the um, more cautious side of war, comparative to Ares, is rage and war. She's the more smarter mind of the two. So generally, she's associated with owls, um, wisdom. You know, 
he's the main patron deity of all of Athens and all of Athens um, clerichies, which a clerichy is kind of like a, a colony. Okay. Cool. But she is one of the 12 Olympians as well. The mainstay gods of Greece. Mm-hmm. That's what you know about her, yeah? Yeah, so I'd, I would just be going for my notes, finding the notes on Athena that I knew, you know, yeah. and then try and <clears throat> obviously learn it again. Sure, absolutely. You can consider yourself pretty familiar with Athena after you've looked up your notes about her. Yeah, no problem. Okay. As uh, Antigonus starts to rouse and come to um, the end of that long rest period, I try to maneuver myself over to the Pythia, and, and hopefully she's a bit awake. Does she look like she's conscious she's, about the same yeah. time I am? The um, weariness you saw in her face um, earlier... Um, so actually go ahead and roll me an insight check on a sleeping person we'll see how this works um 15. um she looks as though she's recuperating some of the sort of more lush liveliness she had when you first met her but she still looks like she's um sound asleep hmm darn <laughs> yeah um I'll just wait and see if, if she starts to, to rouse at any point. Um, yeah, well, within an hour, she would indeed um, open her eyes at least a few times and sit up, lifting herself this time. And um, it's strange. She just just um, new vigor in her that you obviously didn't see before she rested. Uh, she sort of looks around the room, rubbing her eyes once or twice and says, I must have fallen asleep before I was put down here. Uh, where are we? We are in... The Athenian uh, Temple in Xenopolis. That's right, that's oh, right. Yeah. I remember, I remember, yes. Athenian Temple in Xenopolis. Mm-hmm. Tell me, have you spoken with the priestess here? Aquila says, from what I understand, uh, inform them of what's going on. Aquilus, I would also like to speak with the priestess, but for now, my friend, Antigonus, is there anything you needed from me? Well, I know I've already asked my question, and I don't mean to... Uh, strain you more than you've already been strained we've all been through a lot it's just you keep asking about heroes and like well let's just say if a man is chosen by another deity or powerful person if he's given powers if he's supposed to be the champion of that person does it make him a hero what you do in the service of a deity i can only judge action by action the hero's life is spent trying to better the world, and I can't say the same for a hero whose deity happens to be someone more malevolent. But if your deity has good things in mind, good intentions, then perhaps you could be considered a hero. It's heroes a lot of have pressure to put on a man, don't you think? It is the most pressure to be put on a man. She would reach out a hand and put it on your shoulder as she sort of lifts herself into a kneeling position, and she'll say... I would ask you to bear with me, Antigonus, because I will reveal to you what it means to be a hero. Very soon. I just need some more time to prepare. Fair. For now, I'll guard you with my life. <clears throat> I appreciate it. And Aquilus will as well. And she'll look over at Aquilus, who, although sitting there, is definitely asleep. Still got his hand on his sword, but his eyes are closed, and you can just see the sort of steady rise and fall of his chest as he snores a little inside his helmet. Has Preywit come back yet? I'd say this is pretty going in conjunction with one another at this point, so Preywit probably is missing when um, Antigonus uh, awoke, but he does return, I'd say, at, while um, this conversation is going on between the Oracle and. Antigonus. I would have been there as well, but he would have been yeah. like sitting there. Mm-hmm. Hands like just flopped. It'd have a, it'd be asleep with a, obviously, right, so, you know, like paintbrush in his mouth, <coughs> and like, some paper spread on the floor. Sure. Okay. Para would have already been awake, mm-hmm. um, and she would have gone to seek out that high priestess. Sure. The high priestess of Athena is in the main room, sort of kneeling at this um, heightened table that's just a, just ahead of this chest at the end of the room. Excuse me, high priestess. 
No. You have oh, a word. Yes, sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. To sorry, there is a lot on my mind. I just heard there may be some kind of army to worry about. And but what is it you need, please? Yes, actually, the army, that's what I came to talk to you about. Is this the first you've heard of any sort of disturbances? Yes, if there was anything like this, I would have I would have forewarned people to leave. I, I can't imagine where it's come from. Well, I have to tell you, this army, they're not, it's not a regular army. They're not like Greek or Roman soldiers. You're rightfully scared. Your larger friend did uh, mention something about them being a bit snappy. Well, snappy, yes, they're they're not natural. They're not alive, even. There's something very wrong happening. I, I, if your intention is to put me at ease, I must tell you, you're not doing a very good job of it. Hardly. My intention is to tell you that in order to fight whatever this is, you're going to need to talk to your god. I will try and commune with almighty Athena, but uh, whether or not she answers me, I do not know. I I implore you to try. I spoke with the Oracle, and she told me some things. There's something coming. It's already impacted my people far to the north. Everyone is going to have to come together. The Oracle is very wise. Everybody in Greece knows this. If she has told you this, then I would take great weight in it. Oh. But you're right. I will commune with Athena. I will see if she can offer a wisdom in kind. Good. Okay, as this is going on, although um, it's not almost as though she's appeared um, behind you by magic, she's so silent, but the Oracle actually puts a hand on your shoulder, um, Kara. If you wouldn't mind, I need to have a brief discussion with the priestess. Certainly. Alone. She'll smile and she'll lead the priestess aside. And I'll head room. back to the group. Yeah, at this point, she's left the rest of this group in, in your group in this room. Um, Aquilus is still asleep, but the rest of you, is there anything you'd like to be doing as the Oracle seems to have left to talk with the priestess? Uh, yelling and I imagine Larkin would probably just be chatting or mm-hmm. doing like a game or something to keep That's... themselves entertained. Yeah, well, it's not long before the priestess and the oracle uh, arrive back in the room. And um, the oracle will speak to everybody here. And But before she does, she'll walk over and give Aquilus a gentle shake before he um, sort of wakes up with a very soft, um, snoring sort of eyes opening very close, uh, very slowly. But he looks around the room and gauges the situation, but then suddenly realizes he's fallen asleep and straightens up and puts his hand on his sword again. The Oracle will look from each one of you to the others and say, It was my intention in Eritrea to teach you what it meant to be a hero. I know I keep using this word and it means very little, just the word, but I wanted to show you. And I have the power to show you what it means. And I can do it here. I wanted to do it in Eritrea, but obviously we were so rudely interrupted. I would ask you all to join me and I can show you things that would be inexplicable to the minds of any normal person. But I need something. I need something from the temple which it does not have. Please, Hesia, explain to them. And then um, Hesia will step forward looking uh, around the room. She'll take a bit longer to sort of summon the courage to speak out in public. Um, she'll say, yeah, yes, th- there was um, the the Pythia, the Oracle, um, I'm sorry, I don't know how to address you. The uh, the Pythia has asked that we use all our incense to help in the ritual she's preparing for you all. I believe it's something of quite importance to her. We had a little bit of an incident with that recently. I may be partly to blame. I We, we had a new, new acolyte at the temple. I, I trusted her too soon, and I let her into our coffers. And... Um, 
well, I'm not sure how to say this, but she, she may have taken everything from those coppers and left as soon as she arrived. So um, the temple's quite low on incense right now. And I, I, I struggle to say it, but I, I believe we were probably robbed. Did you, uh, Marley. did you, uh, catch the, the name or the, the looks of this woman? Oh, yes. The chance? I remember her very well. She was with us for oh, around a day or so before I trusted her too easily. Her name was Doralia. And, um, she had short red hair. She took to being a priestess very well. She seemed to understand all that needed to be done. I'd never met a more friendly person so ready to help, but obviously I trusted too easily. Do you know her place of residence? Mm. I do not, but she spent much time um, talking and comforting those who rest on our steps outside. If, if anyone wants to know anything about her, they, I'd probably ask them. I am not in the business of tracking down thieves, but this is an emergency, as the Oracle assures me. We need the incense, not the gold. I, uh, I will try. Um, D DM, do I, do I know of anyone called Duralia with red hair? Um, you don't, unfortunately. No. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, when when she's, I'll I'll just kind of. When she's finished, I'll, I'll just head out to the steps and see if the people are still there. Yep, sure. Is anyone else reacting to this news in any other way? I wanted to just any questions sleep. or anything? Did Please. she steal incense or just gold? Uh, incense, gold, vestments, trinkets, all sorts of donations and valuable papyrus. Would this be very heavy? Would she need some way to transport it? Would it be in the city? I imagine she could have carried it out. We'd have seen if she'd had any kind of transport with it. But it was uh, small enough to carry. In a pack, I imagine, some kind of traveling pack, perhaps filled. I'm not sure. I I didn't see her leave with it. How long ago was this? Oh, around a week ago or so. A week. So yes. she could be a week outside the city at this point. It's possible. Well, where's, where can we find more incense, if that's the the immediate need? Um, we get it delivered to us from Athens, which is quite far away, and the Oracle assures me she wants this done soon. I, 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 I can't offer any more, and the Oracle will just silence her with a single wave of her hand. It is important I have this. I understand it is a bit of a mystery to you right now, but the incense is a necessity for the ritual I need you to take part in. If it makes any sense to you... Sorry, go ahead. Antigonus, yeah, stands up right now and sort of looks at the group for a second and says, um, right now I feel as if we're being toyed with a bit. It's as if the uh, there's a greater plan here. And yet I know no one else to do than to follow along to see how we play in this part. I've guaranteed the Pythia my protection and I'll give it to her in whatever way is necessary. I don't know you all very well, but I'd, I'd certainly wish that you do the same until we can figure out why we're tied together. That's the best I can offer. I'm no leader, but, well, I try to keep promises. And I sort of uh, march forward and uh, begin end of the temple as if I'm going to start searching. Would would this next city over have any incense? Do they have a temple? They do, but I don't think they would be too willing to share with us. Well, um, Pythia, when, how quickly do you think you need this, and how, I guess rather, how much do you need? Um, Oh, the Pythia is not answering, so she'll say, I need um, at least th three weeks worth of their usual supply. She gives us a look of how much, like, an, 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 I mean, an, an armful, a, a backpack more, full? I mean, a backpack full may suffice, yes. All right. Well, 
Well, I do not like being toyed with either, but I do agree with uh, Antigonus, so I will help for now. I will honor my friend. All right, well, joining uh, Yaling outside as she's made her way to the steps, she'll see the same motley crew that was there earlier. Old, decrepit, and sick in some cases. As they look back up to you as so generous before, they hold their hands out to you in even more gusto. Excuse me, sorry. I, um... I need to ask you a question. It's, uh... I understand if you don't want to answer, but it's uh, extremely important for the safety of others. Uh, there was a, around a week ago, a red-haired lady who uh, stole from this temple, and uh, she, she took something that we need back. I don't want to get her in trouble or to have a headhunt. I simply want to get what was stolen back. Um, even reimburse her if needs be. Okay, and which to which person is saying this? Or is it just to the group? Pretty much the group. The group, okay. Um, the old man will sort of pipe up first and say, "Yes, yes, Duraria. She was most kind to us. She fed us when the other priestesses wouldn't see us, and she brought out blankets from the temple during the night. Um, I, I was surprised. I thought I'd seen her." again recently but it couldn't have been her she, she wasn't dressed as a priestess yes yeah, she's no longer a priestess um she was more so one for just a day or so uh i believe it was a ruse to maybe rob this place i i want to let you know i'm i'm on her side here i just there's something that we can't get um, and if I can purchase it off her, that would be amazing. Oh, well, I, 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 I thought I'd seen uh, Duralia in the town two days ago. I, I rushed to try and speak with her and ask what had happened, but she was quicker than I, and she passed the corner and I lost sight of her. But I do I... believe I'd still be in the town. Do you know of any uh, hideouts for uh, gangs or a place for uh, those in your situation? I, I I know, boy, that you said that your mother tells you to come here to beg. Uh, where do you go after? Oh well, well, well I, I I'm just a boy, so I I can't go to one part of town. Mum says it's pretty dangerous down there, and if there's gonna be nasty people like gangs, they'll be down there. The Spearhorn gangs down there, they're pretty scary. I've seen Spearhorn before. He's a scary guy. Uh, I uh, so I sort of stay away from him. I threw a rock at him once, <laughs> and he chased me, and he knocked through a, a stone wall to try and get me, but I got away. So don't do that. No, I, I learned my lesson. But they're about down by the docks. No, nobody uses the docks anymore. But that's the only one I can think of. After Thank the you. oracle has started, has stopped speaking, sort of addressed us, and like that awkward like silence of what does everybody want to do happens. Larkin will be like, "Oh, right. Um, let's get on with it then," and then sort of dash out to try hopefully catch up with Yaling and catch the tail end of this conversation. Hmm, yeah, sure. I mean, this conversation's gone on long enough that you can easily, you know, make it there by then, so. Oh, good. On the same page, did you ask them? Uh, yes, uh, the docks seem to be a good lead. Uh, this sounds right up our alley, to be honest. Always oh, the docks. Um, <laughs> well, uh, where would, what direction are the docks? Looking to, like, the little boy or whoever. What's the fastest way to the docks? He'll point down towards the uh, sun, which is now setting in the sky, and it's getting towards dusk. Uh, you guys slept from about 10 a.m. through to like 6 p.m. here, so um, he just looks over, and then he says, the, the, the docks are near the water. Uh, I, I thought that would have been clear. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, let me ask you a different question, because it's, it's been very useful in the past. Uh -huh. um, what is any of uh, your favorite secret spots around here? Hmm... <laughs> I like. This. You never know this. They can be lifesavers sometimes. 
Yeah, there's uh, old garrison where the, the guards used to be here. When when we used to have guards, I wasn't around then, but it's a nice big building, lots of places to hide if you're getting chased. Oh, thank you very much. And she'll give him another jack me. And you'll take him a, a pocket. A little and wink and stand back up. And he'll give you a wink back and he'll say, oh, one last thing. Sorry, uh, what's on your neck there? That's your... your you're one of those things, aren't you? Um, Sorry? You're like a, a lizard person. Oh, <laughs> sort of chuckle and like show him like one of her arms up close. You can touch them if you like, it's just oh. scale. And he'll reach out oh. and he'll sort of just tap it with the end of his finger before he sort of jerks his arm back. It's like, oh. I'll sort of like jump it for him. Like, oh. ah! <laughs> and he sort of backs it off. And it's sort of almost tumbles down the steps behind him. But um, oh, they don't. Careful. Like, he starts like sort of laughing a bit and sort of uh, reaching out See? and touching the arm again. Like, they're harmless. Yeah. That's amazing. Yelang will brush her hair back, revealing on her cheeks. Oh, you've uh, got them too. Yuan Ti is the word you're looking for. He'll lean in like he's about to share like a big secret with you, but he'll just say to the both of you, and how do I get them? I mean, can I get them too? Ooh, <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Larkin has a thought, but give Kylie a moment to get that in order. All right, okay. <laughs> so At this point, Antigonus has walked out of the temple and like, it's seeing like 50 different weights off his shoulders kind of go away and sort of like stretches out into the sunlight a little more as it's going to dusk and shakes it out a bit and mm-hmm. sort of, uh, gathers himself after getting out of that situation and looks around and sees the conversation happening and walks up to the the two girls. Yaling just sweats nervously looking at Larkin. Um, uh, I, uh, I, I think this is uh, more your expertise. It's like a magic if i like lick a snake could i would that work oh no he wouldn't uh, recommend that at all how um, would you do it you just need to be really really cool oh um, i've not got much of a shot then huh oh i think you've got so practice you practice with that the slingshot uh-huh. maybe make one of your own and maybe you can find some right. yeah you know, pick them on Narkin, this is a boy who threw a rock at the gang member. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think this is what we should be telling him. In the right eyes, that can be very brave. <laughs> you ask me. <laughs> I, uh, I, I got mine uh, from uh, from being safe and staying away from danger, taking care of your family. Um, you'll begin to see scales grow. That's so cool. I got, I got mine from being clever. And curious, but but smart. You need to be maybe, smart. Maybe, maybe not the curious side of things. That's amazing. I want to have those two, and I want to have green skin like that guy. And can I I'll... can I can I pull off a scale? Like I don't know if that's a painful thing or not. <laughs> Sounds quite painful. That's like, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> well, can, well, I don't know. Snake, lower, snake's dead. A constitution like... saving for everyone by imagining it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ripping off a nail. Just... No, no, I'm no, just no. imagining. If, if it's a notable, like I would have experienced, I imagine at this point, like yeah, yeah. maybe losing them. So if I know it's a painful <laughs> thing, then then no. But probably pretty painful. Never done. Um, some skin off and give it to this guy. Oh yeah. I don't know. <laughs> sh- I know, I know. And grow him back. I don't know, man. <laughs> now I'm imagining a future date where the party just wakes up to two husks. Of the- <laughs> <laughs> just been just shed shed a husk. Yeah. Uh, well, Sorry, guys. Like, let me put, put this into perspective. perspective. It's that time of the month. We just you know had to shed them. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> like, let me put this into perspe- perspective. You know, it'd be like ripping off one of your fingernails. Okay, never mind. Oh, right. <laughs> and you said you wanted to be green, like, uh, like she kind of looks at herself, thinking, and then realizes that Antonius is yeah, right behind. Yeah, right yeah. Oh, I yeah. Lean into the kid and say, um, "I'm not sure about you turning into one of those, but you keep your uh, wits about you. Maybe your children could, if you get lucky with one of these lovely faces." <laughs> what, See, is what does it mean to get lucky? It's bad. <laughs> right. Right. We have a bit of work to do. I'll let you uh, ask your parents about that one. I'm going to go tell my parents I'm going to go get lucky with a snake. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. 
Oh <laughs> the, the I feel like her job is very well done at this point. It's like <laughs> in doing that, I try to Sorry, I try yeah. to usher uh, Larkin and, and Yaling around, and uh, first I say, um, <laughs> I, I, I chuckle. <laughs> well, uh, I think you can learn a lot about a person by the way they treat the needy and the young. You two are okay on my book. What did you learn? I, uh, thank you. I, uh, did notice you weren't as generous by the door, and she'll kind of ignore and just storm past him. Um, who? Uh, and, and, uh, and, t- and t- oh my days. And t- Antigonus. There you go, there you go. It's an enemy. <laughs> and an enemy. Uh, yeah, she'll, she'll kind of, yeah, you, you did, you weren't as, as, uh, Generous and, and storm past. As she walks off, it's just like <laughs> and he goes with like a comforting sort of pat on the arm. She can be like that. D- don't don't mind it. It'll, it'll it'll lighten up. Um. No, she's right. I was a little uh, taken aback by where we were going. I didn't think about it. T- to be honest, it looked like you were walking with something in your pants. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that in the back end. <laughs> so you're you're staring at my pants on the way in? Yeah. Just to be just clear. Ab- ab- about as like embarrassed <laughs> yeah, at her words as, as Kai am, like Larkin sort of realizes how that came across. And it's, it's not what I, I meant. Um No, look, it's it's all right. I get a lot. <laughs> looked very uncomfortable. Um <laughs> but anyway, we we learned um, I don't want to explain this more than once, so perhaps we can wait for the others real quick. I wish they would hurry. Just glance at the door, oh waiting for God. anyone to save them. So I will just say to you all, I, I, I can show you where the, the docks is if you want. I can take you there. It's not too far. No. Okay. Let's <laughs> back down immediately. <laughs> Larkin, we cannot take this boy. There are gangs there. I wasn't about. I think we could find our way to the water, right? Docks are at the water. That's pretty obvious. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, rest of the party. We're outside right now. We've got um, Lark and Yaling and Antigonus. So I've got Herodotus, Proet, and Cora inside, I think. Unless you guys are. Herodotus yeah, well, is still asleep. We were on so. our way out. <laughs> oh, right. So Herodotus has been left asleep in the uh, Antigonus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you if you want to go and get him or not. So. Kara would go and get him, so she'll <laughs> notice that he's still safe and walk over to him, kind of gently nudge him. Hey, old, old man, uh, old man. <clears throat> well, yes. Hi, yes, um, Kara. Let we're going to go try to do get some things that the Oracle needs. Do you want to come along? Oh, oh yes, I've got, I've got a numb backside for sitting here. Mm-hmm. Well, G- gathering let's see stuff. If we can, let's yeah. see if we can get the blood flowing a bit, shall we? And she'll kind of reach out a hand to help him. Well, I'll gladly take it. I'm just getting like huge Meister Pycelle vibes from Herodotus. <laughs> like he stands up and he's dead, like stiff, and he has to just shake <laughs> up and do, do some squats and stuff, and then like, get moving. <laughs> You wait till you yeah, see I'm him running. running. He'll lift his he'll lift his robes up and start running, and we see like little <laughs> spindly white legs, <laughs> <coughs> toothpick legs. Yeah. Like... Rarities, uh, we are trying to recover some items for the Pythia. Do you have any magic that would help? Oh, oh, oh no, I'd have to see. And I'll, I'll look for his scroll bag. Well, he's doing that. Um, uh, Kara, uh, you appear to uh, you have the appearance of a druid. Uh, I recognize that from uh, my village. Uh, that is a conversation for another day. But uh, let us interrogate someone. Find out who is the most important person around here in the in the way of crime, and uh, find out where we can get this incense. <clears throat> All right. I don't have any better ideas. Yeah, so Preywood is going to lead uh, Kara, and if Herodotes is following him too, Heading. out. And he's going to target uh, the one of the beggars, probably the... Um... I was going to say, if you pass us, we 
probably relay the information we got to you. Yeah, well, so unless unless you're going to stop him, Preywood is going to interrogate one of these beggars. So. Well, <laughs> you no. can stop him, though. Larkin yeah. is, like, waiting for you guys to come out after she sort of, like, put foot in mouth. So as soon as, like, you guys are in sight, it's like you're getting waved down. Okay. It'll, yeah, we'll come over. <laughs> right. Um, I'm not sure how far Yao Ling has walked off, but hopefully uh, not too far as she turns in. Yeah, I would have just stormed into the group, meet, and then if they were coming out, probably would have catched up to them and been like, God damn it, now I have to come back and shamelessly head down, kind of walk back, embarrassed. Yeah, just, just gonna let that like happen. Um, and once everybody's hopefully together, right, 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 right. Um, real quick, so we're all on the same page to the docks is where we're heading. It's apparently- um, Oh, it? Are we getting a boat? Maybe. There is a- there is a criminal gang down there. Uh, the uh, lovely men out front helped us out with that. Uh, I think it's our best way to start. The uh, lady was seen around two days ago in the town. Uh, just a hunch of mine that she probably will be down there. Oh. Um, what does she speak? look like? She has a uh, she has short red hair. Oh, okay. All uh, uh, Palamedes. Yes, Mother. yes. Where, where are you? I'm right here. And um, he's like, he'll uh, actually just land down, like with a very gentle flutter, and uh, stand on some of the steps of the temple. None of you can hear this, by the way, except yeah, um, we just hear him, but not yeah. the. <laughs> <laughs> we see. We are We're looking for a young lady. She's got red hair. Is this a date I'm trying, Heritus, or is it something important? Oh, it's something important, obviously. <laughs> You're not just having me fly around town looking for redheads for you, are you? Hereditus, are you, no, are you no. okay? Of course I'm okay. Do we see the bird, at least? Yeah, yeah. you see the bird, and Hereditus seems to be looking at it at many times that he talks. <laughs> it's like seeing somebody on the, the phone. Like, he has short pauses of not speaking as though he's listening, mm -hmm. and then he says something else. Kara's not faced by this at all, by the way. <laughs> Uh, what, 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 what else am I looking for, Herodotus? Oh, well. I'll say anything else. Um, Anyone who looks like the word spear horn might mean... I don't know what that looks like. Ask the little boy, so, what does the spear horn man you throw a rocket look like? Uh, He's a manator. So he's pretty big. <laughs> a a uh, manator? Yeah, he's a big guy. That's... Uh, why didn't that no yeah he's uh he's a big guy he's got two horns and then he's got another horn here oh right so look look to herodotus a minotaur oh okay a little less confident than she was I'll before say, I'll tell, I'll say, so she's got a red hair and she's a minotaur <laughs> red hair minotaur very interesting Herodotus, the, the lady we're looking for has red hair. Uh, the, uh, the suspected leader of the gang we think she might be in is a minotaur. Oh, hey. He's, she's looking, I tell you, a woman separate from a minotaur. I get it, I'm not stupid, dear. Okay, just making sure. So, uh, the side note here, Harry, um, as a forest gnome, I can speak with small animals. So, okay. is Palamedes vocalizing anything, or is it all mental? You can read the spell. Read the spell to me, because I mean, technically... it's not a spell. It's a racial ability. All right, I read, I read the racial ability. This yeah, okay. Let me pull it up. Because uh, he's not a beast, remember? Well, no, uh, it's just small animals, is what okay. it is. Okay, if but... it's just small animals, I can allow it then. Yeah, but yeah, let me. I'll, I can pull it up. Yeah, because now I need to know things like psychic connection, or is it the. Um, I actually got to speak to it, you know. <clears throat> he could probably speak. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's how the spell is. Speak with small beasts. You can communicate simple ideas with small or smaller beasts. That's it. Oh, maybe it's not understanding them. Maybe just speaking. Mm, yeah, you can, it's, that's one of those spells where it's based on their intelligence and stuff. And uh, but yeah, you can try it. Well, he's intelligent. Yeah, it's, it's, so. yeah I'm... Mm -hmm. I mean, you can try it if you want. Definitely. No, I'm, I'm not going to initiate anything. Uh, I was just wondering if I could understand it. <laughs> it's an interesting one. Yeah, communicating with someone else is familiar in that in that <laughs> way, and if it works. But yeah, that's certainly something we'll have to do in a look of and stuff. So, okay. But, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, you can leave it for a later date. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, um, 
Palomides is going to sort of take off uh, on its wings a little bit, and it's going to hover there for a few seconds and say, one more time, Herodotus, what am I looking for? Oh, red, a redhead girl. Not Minotaur, but also a Minotaur. All right, he'll take <laughs> off and begin flying over the town. He won't say anything back to you just yet. <coughs> Where are you going? I said the docks. Yeah, he's flying across town to the docks. Okay. <laughs> and as he takes off, I turn around to the little boy and very, like, very openly go, uh, <clears throat> thank you for all your help for us, and give him two gold and sort of look at Yaling as I do that. Laying it in his hand. <laughs> With the sort of the, uh, this, the figure you cut, he'll puff out his chest and put his shoulders back and say, it's all right, Mr. Orc. <laughs> And he'll and hold out his hand. From the side, Tignus is getting like a... <laughs> and like a half nod of approval. Yeah, but I look back at you and I'm sort of trying to tell whether you're looking at my pants again. <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh, oh, I get it, I get it, I get it. <laughs> yeah, 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 when but... when you look over at Yaling, she, she just rolls her eyes. Um... Swimming. All right, um, <clears throat> to the docks then. Toward the water. Oh. The, uh, I, don't, I don't like it's... wine at all. That's all right. We'll uh, we'll protect you. Don't worry. Okay. I cast mage armor on myself. <laughs> or okay. if if you'd prefer, you could stay here. It's um, probably not the place for someone like yourself. Oh, no, you might need me. I'm a powerful wizard. I'm I'm sure you are. <laughs> oh. Oh, I think okay. he's full of surprises myself, and I'm, I'm yeah, I'm starting to to move mm. toward the water. Me too. <laughs> sure, making your way through town, simple enough. If you can see the shore from the sort of Acropolis-style hill that the temple itself is upon, you got quite a good view across the town. But it is getting dark, and at this point, you'll see which buildings exactly are occupied and which are derelict, just purely from the soft light that emanates from behind the shutters as you make your way through the town. And the same thing happens again, as though by clockwork. Every time someone sees you. It's just as though they just don't want anything to do with you. Immediately turning into the closest door, whether or not that house is their own, or just making their way in the opposite direction, seeing you come, they'll just do a complete 180. As we walk, does anyone, does anyone look particularly um, like menacing and, and gang-like? I know it's sort of a broad question, but... No, I get um, you. Uh, if, 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 and if so, are they wearing something similar, right? Like, like all brown cloaks or all sort of the hoods or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, well, as you get closer to the docks, you'll start seeing people who don't shy away as you approach sort of um, heralds, you know, you're coming there. So um, though these people do look a bit rougher, scarred, and they're more middle-aged or young men um, as they sort of lean against the sides of the wall of the buildings, um, looking at your very cautious eyes, um, sort of fiddling with any kind of weapon they have, just drawn very sort of uh, carefully, like thumbing a dagger or um, just sort of knocking not not knocking an arrow it's a bit aggressive but uh just sort of like you know uh, running their fingers along quivers and stuff as they as you make your way through but yeah there's a lot of people here and um not a lot of people you know every uh, every building's got someone leaning against it pretty much um but to tell if they're um got any sort of common uh uniform-esque thing which is denoting them you go ahead and run me a perception check to see if you can see that mm. 15? Uh, 15, yeah. You'll see a few of them have um, what seems to be some sort of green bandana-esque thing tied around one of the left wrists. And others have what looks to be, um, we'll say, like um, one of these sort of satchel things, satchel straps that you attach where but there's no satchel attached to it. But when it gets down to the side hip, it's just a collection of feathers. So a green bandana and a feather satchel? Yeah, pretty much. Just a collection of feathers, like a bandolier of feathers. It's been drawn across their chests. But as you get closer and further into it, as this sort of alleys get narrower and narrower, as you get closer towards the docks, you'll be able to hear the tide sort of rolling in gently. And um, one of the people will step out and just hold in your path here now. And I'll just thumb a dagger and say, Are you lost or something? We're here actually to make a purchase. Mm. We're not a store. <laughs> I think we know that. I believe maybe one of your people has taken something and I would like to buy it. 
No, we don't take anything. We're honest sailors down here. No, I know. I'm the same. <laughs> I don't take anything either. And can I, uh, as I'm saying this, can I have attempted to have mm -hmm. s taken something off of him and then... Wow. If I may... <laughs> it's <laughs> a high sleight of hand roll for a guy staring you dead in the face. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like... Just one of his a... diaries or something. <laughs> he's, yeah, just like just something really simple, nothing like I major. You. I got you. Okay, go ahead and roll me that sleight of hand then, and I'll roll it against his... Okay, that was a 19 on the dice. I like this dice That's set. Sure. I rolled um, a perception check for the sake of it as well. I uh, got a five. So oh, um, usually, usually I just make it your roll, but I'd like to see. But yeah, okay. Um, yeah, okay. As, you, as you're talking to him, you sort of raise his ire and get him a bit heated up in his words. He'll say, look, I don't know why you're coming here or what you're looking for, but it ain't here. So why don't you take yourselves back to the main road and see yourselves out of town. And as he's going on and talking about this, he managed to slip a hand into one of his pockets and pull out three drachmi. I, um... <laughs> I don't take anything either. I, uh... Merely looking to buy. I, uh... Think you're missing these. Missing what? Drachmi? You check your pockets often? And it just looks down. It immediately clues onto him that that's not just any three random coins. Those are his three random coins. Um, as he just checks his pockets, notices that the three drachmi he had on him in earlier are just gone. And he snatches it back from you. Is it contested snatch back or? No, it's why she's yeah. giving it to him. So, so he just sort of very sort of heavy handedly grips it and pulls it back to him. So what are you playing at? We want to buy something. What do you, what do you want? What are you looking for? I'm looking for a red headed lady. Ah, uh, all right. So am I, right? And he'll give you a wink, Kara, as he looks at it, <laughs> as, as he sort of turns to one side of the other boat. Ain't we all, right? Hey, uh, her name is Durali, Duraldi? Duraldi? Duraldi. Duraldi? Duralia? Duralia. 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 Uh, never heard of her. Who is in charge? Insight check. <laughs> As he turns to you, throw it and says, I'm in charge. Do I write the boss to you? 20, oh, 30, your... 20. <laughs> what did you get? Sorry? 30, 20. 30, 20. Say again. Sorry. 15, 15 plus 5. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, 30, right. 20. Yeah, okay. Uh, 30, 30, 20. I thought you said 30 20. I was like, what? <laughs> I, I heard 30 20 as well. <laughs> a, dirty, a dirty 20 is a non natural 20. Uh, right. I've never heard that before. But yeah, okay. Yeah. He knows who the rally is, it seems. Is he just the idea of her being involved in the conversation? It gives him a slight quirk of a smile as though she's done a number on you guys, and that makes him a bit proud. Um, so he just says, hmm, never heard of her. Uh, yeah, I'm in charge here. Mr. Mr. In Charge, um, perhaps. Since we're we're new here and you are very very kind, you would uh, care to show us around? And I um, I'd attempt to persuasion check if I... you want to try that on him. Sh sure. <laughs> also, like fiddling with the box a little and like touching okay. him on the arm and like a little bit of magic is gonna sort of use her body as a conduit to him and attempt to charm person. Charm person. Okay, <clears throat> now that's um, a wisdom saving throw for me. It is indeed uh, against uh, okay. a 14. 14, he fails. So uh, he just sort of, um, his cheeks go a bit rosy and his eyes just turn a little um, wider and his pupils dilate a little as he just sort of gives you a big toothsome grin, but it's not a pleasant one to look at. He's missing several teeth and others are chipped. We just says, yeah. Yeah, I can show you around, of course, and no one knows he's street better than old me, right? Of course, of course, and particularly, I've never <laughs> seen a minor tour before. Do you happen to know one? Oh, yeah, his name's Spheron. He's in the oh. docks. He's uh, working with Duralia, and she's, uh, yeah, she's... Oh, she's, thank you. Can uh, I also have one of these? Thanks. I'm going to take a feather and, like, stick it under my hair without really yeah. waiting for an answer. Oh, yeah, take two of them. Here, go on. Does anyone else want one feather? <laughs> oh, oh, yes, please. Hey, what's a feather, right? And, and Herodotus is, like... Hair, beard. I'm putting his beard. What about you, little boy? And he'll hand one down to you, bro. <laughs> Question. Um, Prego won't make any motion. Like, if he puts it in his hair, it'll happen, but uh, Prego is just not <laughs> reacting. I'll put one in your hair and then pat you on the head. So, yeah, there you go, little champ. What about you? Rest of you. Feathers are around. It'll just like hand start handing out feathers. Oh, 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 what a nice gentleman. 
He'll say, follow me, I'll introduce you to Sparrow. He's a top feather. Come on, come on. Quick mm-hmm. question, Larkin. Mm-hmm. When you cast that, do we, is there anything visible? Like, <laughs> magic guys? Like, did we see? Do we know you cast something? Um, She was trying to be somewhat subtle about it for his sake, not necessarily for your all sake, but right. it's, it's verbal semantics. So she would have had to sort of mutter a couple arcane things and you might have saw like the a little bit of crackle of energy go from like hand to box through her hand to him. Cool. Um, so perhaps I'll leave it to you. Um, blah, blah, blah. 10 on the arcana. I probably won't even pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he'll lead you down through them <clears throat> several streets towards the docks. And it's a very pleasant, warm evening. You can hear the sort of cicadas in the air and stuff, giving a very pleasant sound as the sun sets over the sea. And it's complete. Uh, on, across from this town, where are you? In um, Zenopolis. Yeah, you'll be able to see mainland Greece quite far off in the distance, um, even at this light. But um, beyond that, it's a very calm sea. But there are several sort of jetties that over, overarch the ocean um, in different places down the docks. And some of them have these warehouses attached to them. And this warehouse is on stilts in the ocean with a jetty going to it. And it'll point to it and say, uh, Spearheads are right out. Uh, spear on. Spear on's right out. I mean, uh, I can show you to it if you want to. They'll let me in, and if if you want, I'll, I'll give you a proper introduction to him. Sure. I'm, his, I'm like his best mate, so it's great. <laughs> that's, that's perfect. I'm really excited. Just give us a moment. I need to speak to my friends. I'll take all the time you need. I'm just going to go and talk with my friends. Hey, guys, I've got some friends here. Just going to just walk off and start trying to grab somebody else. So <laughs> while he like steps away quickly and looks at them, mm. should just let you know that... He's not going to be very happy about that in about an hour. So whatever we want to do. Oh, nonsense. He's a nice man. Oh, Palamedes is okay. We found a nice man to take us to him, meet him. And Palamedes will contact you back saying, well, it's a good thing because I haven't seen any red-headed minotaurs around. My uh, speciality is uh, <clears throat> stealth and uh, investigation. So... I will be outside the warehouse looking for another way in. Whoever wants to go in, you seem to be handling yourselves just fine. And I will be nearby to support if need be. And with that, Prewood is going to turn around and he's going to try and find a way onto the roof, kind of a, a hidden way to get into the warehouse. Sure. Okay, so Prewood, as you're uh, going over to the warehouse, just make me a quick perception check to see what you see on the approach to it. Okay. Could I do investigation or perception here? Uh, I'd say perception. Not quite close okay. enough to do a sort of an investigation on it. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, that's terrible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me pull it up. Uh, yeah, that's uh, eight. <laughs> An eight, yeah. Unfortunately, the design of this place is very specifically chosen by the gang because there's one way to it, which is this, the jetty that leads onto the ocean to the warehouse. Um, from it, you can see that you can't really see another way on just to go for that jetty. But with oh, it's eight, it's on the it's in the sea a little bit then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this, and there is, in, with an eight, you can definitely see that there is somebody on the jetty already as well, uh, leaning against the side of the warehouse. Um, um, mm. Sorry, I was I was just going to ask, uh, do I know of any uh, big gangs, DM? Anything like that? Big gangs? Maybe like, some, it's like a powerful gang. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you would know a few of them. Um, there's the Sons of Mars in Athens. Um, can, I, can I assume to know these as well or no? Yeah, pro- I'd say you're both pretty familiar with gangs and stuff. So um, there's the Sea Swarm Brothers, which operate on one of the isles or several of the isles across the Aegean Ocean. Uh, Sons of Mars in Athens. Uh, there's several smaller ones scattered around. There's plenty in Argus. Um, but, you know, it's basically a question of how open-ended you want to get with it because you you know a good few of them, so... Uh, I, was, I was more thinking if uh, if I knew if any... You, yeah, if it tells you anything, you've never heard of the Spearhorn gang before. So. Okay, okay. Um, Harry, is there a way that Prigwit could feasibly swim over? Um, yeah, it seems so. You could try it, at least. I mean, you could try and swim to it. Okay, well, he's going to get to a point where he's somewhat hidden mm-hmm. and swim over as stealthily as one can swim. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, roll me stealth check. <laughs> Okay. Okay, that's better. That's better. Uh, 17. 
17. Okay. Well, the light is still in the air, in the sky enough that you can sort of it penetrates the ocean surface, so you can see things um, which are which tell you a bit about the structure. Um, one of which is the pillars that it's on. These wooden pillars that go deep into the ocean floor and sort of keep this structure aloft. But you do see dipping down as well. It's sort of a lowered ramp, but it doesn't seem to match up with where the jetty was. It's probably on the other side of the building. Preywood uh, doesn't want to go in by the main entrance. He's going to mm-hmm. climb up one of these pillars and hopefully get near a window or something. Yeah, as sure. Hopefully, as possible. All right. Um, roll me an athletics check to climb up the um, building there. Oh, that one. <laughs> that one, yeah. Um, so as you're climbing up, you just don't make sort of take into account of the sort of the briny slime that's accumulated on these pillars over some time. And as much as you try and dig your fingers in, just slide off. But you, unfortunately, you do make it up some distance, and then you fall, and you let out a large splash, which you'll hear as you raise your head above water to take that sort of panic first breath. Someone say, "What was that? Anybody in there?" Uh, Preywood is going to swim underneath so that nobody can see him from the building. You know, right. before he takes his breath, he's going to pop out underneath. All right, got you. <laughs> All right, sure. Um, but as this guy's talking to him, like somebody else in the building said, I could swear I heard something. <laughs> you, you can hear his voice very clearly as though it's getting closer, um, yeah. as though he's sort of peered his head out a window, for example. Um, this looks down at the ocean floor, but you can't really see what he's doing. And you can just hear him talking to somebody. I'll say, you ain't seen nothing out there, you idiot. <laughs> You bloody fish or something. And the other guy's like, yeah, it's, I swear I heard something out there. Well, yeah, it's just my imagination, obviously. And he sort of video game NPCs his way back to his position. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> well, decided that this is nothing. <laughs> must, must be my imagination. <laughs> yeah, must be the one. Okay, um, so Preywood is going to take out his magnetic gloves and use them to scale the building. All right, sure, yeah. Okay. <laughs> thought you had those, but all right. <laughs> yeah. we, we can um, go to the other people. Yeah, Preywood's going to keep okay. trying to get in stealthily. But... I do like your attempt to use magnetic gloves on a wooden structure, though. That's very really <laughs> Um... <laughs> So while that's happening, uh, Antigonus turns to uh, Yaling and says, um, I think you've got a good handle on this, but uh, just to be clear, a woman spent weeks of her life trying to subtle her way into a temple, stole their goods. I don't know if they're going to give up with them very easily. Oh, no. I don't think they'd want much with incense. They'd probably think it's more for profit. If we offered to buy it, maybe they'll show it to us. Whether we buy it or not, I don't know. But uh, I do think uh, this Minotaur man means business. I, I, I don't mind doing the talking along with Larkin. We're used to this sort of thing, but I think they might respond a little better if we had a uh, big man by our side. Oh, I'll, I'll let you know if I find one. <laughs> <laughs> As this is going on, Crass, uh, I do not know his name yet, actually. I almost said it. But... Uh, the fellow you met earlier comes back over to you. He seems now to be sort of cutting up an apple with a knife, and, like stabbing it and putting it in his mouth in that way that um, typically uh, shady characters do. <laughs> and just, um, cuts off a single slice and stabs it again. And he just puts it to your mouth, Antigonus. Gives you a nod. Oh, um, sure. Yeah, I'll uh, very carefully like take my like orc teeth and like uh-huh. and try to bite it off. Uh-huh. <laughs> He us talk with his mouth saying, well, he said that we can go into the warehouse as long as you've got some drag me to buy stuff with. Uh, I can introduce you to Spearhorn. Um, sure. Um, could you perhaps spare the, the three to help get us in? I think it help coming from you would be... Spare the three? The, the drag me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the drag me, right, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, make a persuasion check with advantage because he's charmed. She's actually asking mm-hmm. you to give up with money, so... Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, uh, 23. Okay, yeah. I'll say, yeah, yeah. Hang on, I've got some more as well. Let me... And he'll pull out two more drachmi and give you five drachmi. <laughs> you think, was that enough to get me and, and my friends in there? Yeah, I think? haven't eaten in two days. I was going to buy some bread with that, but I think <laughs> you probably need a bit more than I do from the sounds of it, no problem. So, okay, I'll take it, and then, like, as best as I can, slip six into his pocket as we as i walk past him just <laughs> conscience of, getting the better of me you a slight hand check as you do <laughs> <laughs> trying to pick pocket money from somebody's pocket um <laughs> pick pocket but put the same amount back <laughs> Re- reverse pick a po- pocket him with, with a seven it's like pick a pocket pack up, pack up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> me seven 
seven, yeah. He um, instantly grabs your hand and he takes, uh, but he lets you put it in his pocket and he takes his hand out again. And just, <laughs> oh, I found six more. There you go. <laughs> Well, it's my lucky day, isn't it? You've got a pocket full of drink, me. I think that's yours. You just found an extra. Thank you, and just kind of walk past before you can actually right. give it to me. It's going to try and catch up with you as you sort of hear his footsteps on the uh, ground behind you. Say, I've got six more, please. Please, no, take. Keep that for yourself. Maybe you can take her out to dinner after all of this. Uh, all right, we'll do. <laughs> uh, right, well, anyway, uh, come on. I've told the guard. Getting but- a little luck. <laughs> But okay, yeah, you're led to a um, a jetty, and um, meanwhile, you haven't seen Pro in some time. But um, you five <laughs> are led to sort of a jetty that sort of branches out onto the ocean. And at this point, maybe I should put you actually on a battle map for Pantheon for the first Ooh, time. First time. Tell me if everybody, if anyone can't see, is the most important thing. Do you mean dark vision or? Um, no, just, it's like if it's a black map, just let me know. Oh, I was roll, like, what do you mean 20. if we can't see? <laughs> yeah, on roll twenty. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a black map. You good? Yeah, if you scroll down. Oh, there it is. Never mind. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're out there. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Dun, dun, all right, dun, dun, so you'll all recognize your own characters dun, 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 from your dun. portraits, but of course, this guy's the um, the addition. Um, He's a nice man. Yeah, so. Um, it was actually a guy, obviously, up on the back. So he'll lead, he'll lead the party to the jetty, and he'll keep ushering you along every time he thinks you're falling behind, saying, come on, come on. Uh, you know, come up to this guy, and he'll say, uh, Crustinus, these are the ones that I want to talk to old Spiro. I've told him, best mates. <laughs> so, Before he gets too far, can I ask him, hey, what, what was your name again? My name? Yeah. It's Pissaris. Right, right. Carry on. You write my as we're walking across the dock. I, I sort of <laughs> what's this? Can you actually say his name one more time for me here? Uh, P Starus, P Starus, P Starus. Okay, thank you. And as we're walking down the dock, I start looking around thinking, How the hell is he gonna get in him stealthily? See if I like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you're underwater, go ahead and roll me another perception check if you want to see what's going on down there. Um, me? okay, yeah. Oh, that's better. That's better. Uh, natural 19 for a total of 23. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Again, um, you see several sort of um, pillars that um, that keep this thing aloft, but there's nothing much else except that same ramp that seems to lead underwater, probably for um, loading the lower decks of boats or something. Yeah, Prewood's still going to try and climb up a pillar. He doesn't want to go in by the main entrance. <laughs> yeah, that's not, I should clarify, that's not the main entrance. It's sort of a back entrance that's been um, on the other side of the building. Okay, so there's a ramp, that's the back entrance, and yeah, then there's... It's, it's... What is the main entrance, then? Uh, the main entrance is on the actual jetty. Okay. Yeah, okay, so I guess he'll he'll uh, stealthily uh, go up this ramp, I guess. All right, uh, roll me stealth. What did you roll your first stealth check again? I mean, because I, I should make you roll several stealth checks, because... The first stealth check was 17. Okay, sure. Let me, yeah. Uh... Okay, interesting. Um, so, yeah, making your way up this... Um, are you going up the ramp? Or are you going trying to climb up the build, uh, side of the building again? Um, so, uh, uh, slowly going up the ramp to see if anybody's looking. If it's clear that the ramp is being observed, then I'll try the, the one of the pillars. Okay, sure. Uh, it doesn't seem like the ramp is being observed, so... Okay. Dun 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 dun. So okay, can I? I'll stop you there, and then um, <laughs> go to the rest of the party there. Which um, <laughs> you say, yeah, my name's Pistorus. <coughs> That's Crustinus. Inside, we've got Spearon and Dornia. Uh, Dorania. <coughs> um, any anything uh, we should expect when we see inside there, Pistorus? A lot of loot is what we got. Nothing special. Anything that really smells really nice? Yeah, sure. Not spear one though, she stinks. Right, of it's course. all right. We'll, uh, we know what we're looking for. And she'll look back at the others. Uh, I presume the Yarling's probably never seen incense before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I've got barley. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, he's going to lead you down to this deck, and he, he'll have this guy stand aside, so and the other guys will be like, yeah, yeah, get on with it. No, he's not He's not in a good mood, though. Uh, why not? 
the guy will look round to you and you'll say, none of your business, why not? Oh, well, hopefully we can cheer him up. Come on. Mm, hopefully. Yeah, come on, come on, I'll introduce you. And um, he leads you all to this door and I'll let you guys move your own tokens as he um, opens this door and he'll announce himself of grand fashion and say, hey, Spearhorn, it's me. I've got some friends. Um, found them at the temple. Oh no, they came from the temple. Did, they, did you say you came from the temple? I don't mean you did, right? No, no you didn't, right? Okay, so you didn't retract that statement. Because they found some friends down in town said they're looking to buy some special stuff from us. And as you guys are, as this sort of huge um, wooden door opens wide, you're inside a singular room, very large and very creaky. As you can hear the ocean beneath your feet, only a few feet down from where this um, structure is suspended above the ocean's waves. Um, dominating the center of the room, there is a large, large creature um, sort of balancing a heavy ax on one side as he sits on top of a few boxes. Um, he let out a heavy, heavy, steamy puff through his nostrils as he looks to the door and um, this guy comes through and announcing himself and he looks at the rest of the party here. You'll see he's got no armor on his upper chest, just uh, from the waist down, just some sort of shabbily put together leather kilt as he sort of um, stands up on his huge, heavy hooves, which seems to, it almost seems as though the wooden floors of this thing are gonna give way any second underneath him as he just lets out a loud. Best the- for us, who's this you've brought to us? My name is Yaling. I'm here to purchase some goods that you may have come into contact with. And what makes you think we've got goods, Yaling? We think that your bunch are very talented individuals. Uh, We heard of a pretty big score, and uh, you have something that's in no disrespect amongst all of your loot is... uh, not the most valuable, uh, but it has become apparent that it could be very useful for us. And I was wondering if you'd be willing to make a bargain. Mm. And she's got to kind of be like leaning up against the post, kind of saucy, like maybe right. wink a few times, maybe, trying her best. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a persuasion check as you uh, talk to him this way. But, uh, as you do, uh, Doralia is going to turn around now. This sort of short woman, around uh, five foot one, but with equally like very short red hair, almost cropped to like within a three on a haircut. Um, and she looks around at you. She's sort of twiddling with a dagger in her hands, and she just looks to you, yelling, and says, "And what big score did you hear of exactly?" A, hey, uh, let's just say we're in the same trade as you. I uh, heard of a amazing. An amazing plan you had. You see, me and my friends, we tried to take on this uh, temple. We'd rumored to hear it had lots of gold, only to hear that uh, someone had already got there beforehand. Not here out of uh, to take the stuff. It's rightfully yours. In fact, it's very impressive, the work you did. But uh, we've been offered a lot of money for some incense. It's a... Uh, it's by the temple themselves. They just want it back. So we thought instead of trying to rob this in our empty temple, we might as well try and make a score by bringing some of it back. Of course, we'd be willing to give you most of the share. It's just uh, need a little something extra on the side. So I'm going to look to Duralia, who looks back. See, what was the result of your roll? It was a 16. 16. Duralia, you'll say, the incense they want. It's not that much. Spihon looks from one of you to the other, his huge sort of uh, big side on eyes, um, very cautiously observing. And before he looks back to one of the crates in the back of the warehouse and looks back and says, 400 drachmi, and I'll pay it with the incense. They pay good stuff for that over in Persia. Oh yes, incense worth a lot of money. You're right. He's right. Incense is worth a lot of money. It is. You see that, like I said, we were going to rob the temple. We don't have much ourselves. We were hoping to purchase... She'll kind of... to bargain. Roll me a deception check with disadvantage. What? Okay, fine. 
I think it was it Herodotus who said Roman. Or oh, it was we. <laughs> That's so frustrating because on the dice I got a nat twenty, but then I also got a ten. So deception that would be a fourteen. Fourteen. Sorry. <laughs> Just a Larkin. Sure. Larkin just has her hand like the confidence was that she had outside of this building like faded with every step closer to this doorway <laughs> now she sort of has her hand on the box casually just like staring at the minotaur a little bit like mm -hmm. a little less sure he's not six, got red hair six of you looking to rob a temple well looking that's... for a woman with red hair who told you about a woman with red hair more likely you've been hired by the temple to take it back and with that he's just gonna grab his axe and look from one of you to the other six of you to rob a temple? Not at all six. You see, I had to hire some people to come with me. I didn't think I'd go very well as a, a lady on my own. Don't. As I'd heard, you're uh, all very strong. I'm very strong and you're about to see it. Bestie has closed that door. Seems our halls has got twice as big. And with that, I need everyone to Roll initiative for oh, me. But it. we will get back to that after the break. Oh, <laughs> oh right. This is my best first no. be on combat. Dun, 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 dun. All right, guys, we will see you <laughs> in about. All right. Um, welcome back, everybody. Thanks so much. Uh, and as we left the party there, they'd stumbled over their conversation, their tricky, trickery a bit, with Spearhorn, the um, gangster boss minotaur in his warehouse here on the ocean. Uh, before combat begins, I think, Pro, you want to do something, so... Yeah, so Preywood's going to try and climb up onto the roof and get a good vantage point to uh, snipe and listen. Okay, yeah, sure. You'd have heard the commotion going on from inside, the whole conversation, pretty much. Especially with Spearhorn's very gruff voice. He seems to command a large presence, and you could easily hear that it was turning south. So go ahead and roll me athletics to see if you can climb up, and then we'll jump straight into combat. I think we've already all rolled initiatives, so... Jeez. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, well, it's still going to be okay. Uh, 11. 11. Mm. You just can't seem to sink your fingers in enough in certain places. You put your hand on one plank and it's rotted so much, it just comes off. Um, and to that, one of the um, people inside look around at a random plank falling off the side of the wall. You lose <laughs> your grip. You don't fall, but you do slide down the side of the building sort of um, like a cat trying to stay on the side of a wall until you find your feet have touched the ground again. But yeah, you don't quite make it up onto the roof, unfortunately. Um, but okay, but it is your turn at the start of combat. So yeah. here we are jumping straight into combat. So pro it, um, you heard this commotion going on inside and you've heard them shut the door or, or the, the door to be shut um, behind them. But it seems like it's coming to blow. So what would you like to do? See if you have any battles. Yeah. I mean, so Prewit is going to go 510, mm -hmm. see everything that's going on. I mean, he's remaining hidden. Like, really, he'd be, a, a, like, on this corner of the door here, but I, uh, I, my token can't see anything from there, so yeah, I'm sure. just going to put him there. Um, yeah, and he's going to take a shot. Uh, does the guy in front of the Minotaur look aggressive as well, or just the Minotaur? This is Doniala, the woman who, uh, with the red head, uh, sort of, you know, hair, very short hair. So uh, the Minotaur clearly looks like he's going to attack. Does the red-headed woman also look that way or not? Um, I'd say yes, probably. She's got a knife out at least, and she's sort of looking at the party. So, Okay, well, let's uh, take out the, the weakest first. He's going to snipe at uh, the red-headed woman. All right, go ahead and ro roll me that attack roll. And um, I said this before, I'll just reiterate for people who weren't in the roll. -up. Let's have some flavor with our attacks because c combat should be fun, right? Let's do right. <laughs> just to say. Like, yeah, so yeah. So he's going to peek around the corner. Um, uh, what, one of the party members might see an ear pop out mm -hmm. around the corner um, from Prewit and just take his bow a real quick around the corner, snipe quickly, aim for the neck, and just duck around the corner immediately after the snipe. He, it's mm -hmm. practiced enough that he doesn't necessarily need to see the shot land. Absolutely. Go ahead and roll me that attack then. Uh, with advantage because he's hot, hidden? Um, yeah, if yeah, I'd say you're hidden going into it. So yeah, definitely. Cool. Uh, okay. So let me pull up my character sheet. Combat. I'm not used to this yet. Okay. <laughs> um, that is 19 to hit. 19 definitely hits. So, yeah, yeah, go ahead and roll damage. And also, I think with the sneak attack. Sneak you are... attack, yep, because I had advantage. Sneaky, sneaky. Okay. 
style music. <laughs> that is 14 piercing damage to 14 the neck. Piercing <laughs> damage, very good. He doesn't actually see you, obviously, because he's his attention so focused on these people in front of him that he just feels this um this very sharp point in his neck. You can see it sinking. That, that, that's the muscle. girl. That's not against oh, the minute. Sorry. Oh, yeah. right. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, my mistake. Yeah. She doesn't even <laughs> see uh, see it coming one bit like um as you round the corner and pull your bow toward and fire it um you'll see it travels completely true like it doesn't drop an inch in the air it's just like a, it's almost as though it's fired from a crossbow it's so powerful and the rest of the party you're looking at this woman looking at you and you just see her eyes glaze over all of a sudden and her, her vision just goes on the focus as though she's staring through you and she just pats herself puts her hand up to her throat and she feels an arrow has gone straight through and she just gives it a single tug, and a cough of blood comes out of her mouth. It's just a like, <coughs> she did, falls straight on her back. Dead as a doornail, straight away. With the I'm so down. happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, does that end your turn then? Having um, yeah. done my turn. All right, so um, go ahead. It's Yowling's turn. Um, I would like to cast Tasha's Hideous Laughter on the Minotaur, please, if I may. Uh, that is a. Uh, but uh, wisdom saving throw. All right. Um, wisdom saving throw for me, is it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, against what DC? 13. 13. All right. So explain how this happens and what it looks like. Uh, so <laughs> Yarling kind of looks over a bit stunned and uh, <laughs> trying to think of a joke, but I can't on the spot. Um, <laughs> she'll uh, start to almost push her hand out towards him and a big grin will just appear on his face if a minotaur can grin mm -hmm. and he just finds now everything hilarious and yelling kind of laughs with him a little bit as she's doing it just kind of like <laughs> just joining in um and he should be not prone and has to at the end of his round do another wisdom saving throw to see if he gets out yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Um, to the confusion of the rest of the people in the room, his stern demeanor suddenly turns a bit softer as he stands straight up and you can see these several flat cow teeth in his mouth just spreading this horrific sort of Cheshire cat grin as he just <laughs> lets out this big bellowing. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll fall back and with such a colossal sort of um, heavy thud that the floorboards around him begin to crack as um, his whole like, huge muscular back just falls straight backwards. <laughs> and you can hear the sort of straining of this wooden planks beneath him. But he is prone and incapacitated until he succeeds on that save. So, all right, does that end your turn? It does. I'd actually like to chuck uh, some bardic inspiration to who is next. Um, I'll, I'll chuck some bardic inspiration to Kara. All right, so yeah, Kara, I'm going to uh, signify this with a little blue circle here. You got bardic inspiration, but all right, it's the uh, bandit's turn now, and um, the one outside's immediately going to hear the commotion going on inside, and he's going to take a step right up here, and he'll have been pulling a scimitar from his side here um, as he makes his way up, a sort of very long curved blade that looks very strange, possibly from a foreign land, but um, he swings it out at you, Kara, from behind as he rushes up and tries to stick you with it before you can sort of get your bearings on the situation. So he'll roll with uh, a 10. Uh, miss. A miss, yeah. He's so eager to get it, like, to stick you that he doesn't actually see where your robes are hiding actual flesh. So he just stabs it through the robe, but it's, like, hanging on the side, and it just comes out at the start. And he just has to pull it back, and he sees no connection's been made, no blood's been drawn. So he just growls at you, and he gets ready to strike again, but it's not his turn. It's this guy's turn, and he's, he's does the same thing. As soon as he's ordered by Spearhorn, um, Pistris will turn around, and he'll say, Sorry, love. Orders is orders, but you know, I'm always your mess mate. And he's going to swing out his scimitar as well at you, um, Larkin. With a 13? No dice. <laughs> oh, right. These guys are not rolling so great. Um, but seeing that um, you've caused some sort of magic there, yelling, this guy's going to see you as a potential threat. So again, he's going to sort of brace his scimitar at his side, and he's just going to do sort of like a jousting run at you try and oh. stab you with his scimitar as he makes his way over to you and he rolls a a four wow i'm pretty that good misses. Rolls tonight huh yeah so he just this guy he braces his thing so much that he actually um just 
drops it as he gets closer to you, as it stumbles along the ground at his feet. He just has to clamber down and pick it up and look around, like checking if nobody saw that or not. But he gets ready to strike again. But that will just, end the bandits. She just pointed the bandit, looking at the minotaur, like. <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, the Minotaur's still rolling around in fits of laughter, but all right, Kara, it's your turn. Uh, brief reminder, Bardic Inspiration gives me... But 1d4 on <coughs> your attack roll or... Um, okay. Or uh, ability roll, I think. Okay. Roll. So um, I'll take my staff and, like, kind of knock it against the ground. Mm -hmm. And when I do, all of the plants that kind of surround the staff will bloom there'll be flowers that kind of bloom okay, all along good. the staff. And I'm using my bonus action to cast Shillelagh. Ah, right, okay, yeah, very nice. And as you say, um, sort of magical aura from these plants, like vividly colored plants, the petals so pristine and perfect as they bloom on your staff. And yeah, it's a magical weapon with a okay. wisdom modifier on attacks and damage rolls. Yep, and so then I will use that staff to go ahead and attack the guy that just swung at me. Mm. Uh, yeah, sure, go ahead, absolutely. All right, that is going to be a dirty 20. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. All right, that's a definite hit. So, um, Harry, we got combat music. Uh, we don't. I'm, I'm, I've okay. been, while we've been doing this, I've been looking through a million songs and none of them are any good. So, oh, no worries. <laughs> Skirmish. And skirmish, like, these ones are called skirmish and medieval battle and stuff. They're actually ambient sounds of battle, so they just don't make sense. Oh, <laughs> like a million people fighting and just stuff mm. is just like. It's frustrating, I know, something I should have uh, figured out, but yeah, sorry about that. We just have to deal with this for the time being. <laughs> so. yeah. But okay, um, yeah, go ahead. Um, so what did you roll, sorry? The hit? Uh, I rolled crap for damage. I got four total. Four da damage, yeah. Sort of connects with his side, catching his arm and then his torso as um, he feels like it's a natural, almost like a nettle sting coming from the shillelagh as it sort of cr like cracks him across his body. He takes four damage. He's still up. It's still ready to fight, but it's Antigonus's turn. Unless that, does that end your turn, Cara? Yeah, it does. Okay. So Antigonus, what would you like to do? Um, seeing how this is working, I'm going to reach in my pouch and grab um, a little bit of dry clay that's not been yet wet, and I'm going to sprinkle it over my face. And as I do that, I cast Shield of Faith, and this the my skin starts to bulge a little with almost like a layer of, of uh, hardened clay on the outside of it, and I become much darker and much more... Um, earthy in my tones Very as cool. my bonus section there. And then I will uh, stride up to this gentleman here. Oh, there's a pillar there. How, how much, so I think I can get around the pillar this way and flank him maybe, is that enough? Um, uh, yeah, but if you're looking for the use of flanking, I don't do flanking. So, uh, okay, yeah, you won't. If you, but you are like flanking him in the literal sense, but you're not going to get an advantage on the roll. Yeah, yeah, I will. I'll probably just stop here then, so I have uh, something between me then, and I will um, take my mace and rear it back and take a try to club him right across the face. Yeah, sure. As you say, you are coming out with this sort of strange magic around in your body. As this guy's caught off guard, still picking up his sword, he stands up and suddenly there's a huge half orc standing to his right. He just looks across with a bit of fear. Enjoy your roll. I rolled an eight plus something. Not quite used to this yet. Um, eight plus three, 11. 11 won't do it, unfortunately. As you swing, he just manages to pull his face back almost though it's by accident and he feels on the very sort of cartilage on the end of his nose your mace just touch him as though if he was just half an inch closer it would have taken off the whole nose but he's there he just pats his nose like thanking sweet gods that he's still alive and then quickly i say if you want to keep your face fight on our side and then that's my turn all right make an intimidation roll <coughs> 12 plus something I'm going to take my bonus action to swoon, Three, please. Uh, 15, 15 total. <laughs> 15, all right. Let me roll to see. I'm going to give him like something for this charisma save. All right, interesting to know. We'll react to that on this turn. Uh, all right, but for right now, it's Spearhorn's turn. And currently, 
he is flat on his back, sort of great axe to his side, huge stomach, sort of like a muscle gut that he's got, and huge paw on the top of it, just letting out a giant, horrible belly laugh from the center of the room. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> dropped his sword. <laughs> I know, he does that. <laughs> <laughs> Who does that? He does. rolling around, like you can feel the stilts that this building is on begin to shake as this thing is <laughs> huge body of just sort of thing and you can see the floors beginning to crack <clears> up <throat> beneath him um but yeah he will make his wisdom saving before the end of his turn can't do anything else and he fails so he's still <laughs> i mean ball. he was right in front of me he was so close <laughs> i could just <laughs> <laughs> crazy has can't handle a sword <laughs> yeah and it carries on like that for some time but larkin it's your turn would you like to do yeah um <laughs> Real quick, we're getting a little bit of a suggestion on from somebody in the channel to say play Field of Heroes as a suggestion for music. So I'll throw that oh, at you. Okay. Let me uh, take a look at that pretty quickly. Sure. Thank you very much for that as well. Whoever's done that. Thank you. Murder that. Squid. Uh, to look through these Field of Heroes. But go ahead and describe what you're doing. So. Yep. Um, so getting a little bit of the confidence back, saying this seems to be going in our favor. Um, Larkin will do what she does best. And that is oh, That's cool. go to grab what we hopefully came here for. And having seen them look in the direction of the crates behind the laughing minotaur, mm -hmm. she will um, pretty much sk skedaddle in that direction. Okay. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Um, under the effects of Tasha's hideous lasting, he is classed as incapacitated, so he will not get his um, attack of opportunity on you. Um, yeah. Roll me a quick investigation check to see how fast you can find yes. the right crate. Investigation. Boom, 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 boom. Pardon. Mm, 14, 18. 18, yeah, it's not too long. You can actually find the crate just purely from the sound of it as you pick it up. A lot of them obviously filled with some sort of clanging trinkets and metals, but you feel one that sort of feels like it shifts weight a bit, and you indeed you open it to see several sort of powders inside, obviously what's used to make up incense. But. Um. If that's my action, no worries. If if mm. otherwise, I can spend as much time. Is it, does it seem liftable? Um, or is it too heavy of a barrel? It's heavy, but I will let you roll athletics as the final thing to do on your turn. See if you can lift it. No, if, no, if, if, it if it immediately seems too heavy, like she will just spend the time, like now attempting to shove and fill her backpack with as much incense as possible. <laughs> All right. Okay. Sure. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, you've already taken a look as an act, so I'll say you get like three handfuls or so. But there's plenty here. Okay, that's what I'm currently doing, looking over my shoulder in, in panic. <laughs> uh, as this is going on, Spearhorn is obviously a bit annoyed that he can't stop laughing, but he still says in such a really jovial tune, like, <laughs> stop her, <laughs> she's, she's stealing all the incense. <laughs> I'm going to kill every one of you. <laughs> I'm going to kill you all. <laughs> I'm sure you're not. <laughs> that's the See, funniest thing I've heard all day. Yeah, he's straining to like try and not laugh, <laughs> try and look serious, but this can't stop it. Um, all right, so is that end your turn, Mark, in there? Yeah, oh, yeah, that's bonus action action. I'm just stealing incense, re, right. re stealing <laughs> incense. <laughs> Herodotus, it's your turn. What would you like to do? He'll um, obviously <coughs> be a bit taken back with the voice behind him and turn around and obviously see that the uh, the guy just took a swing for uh, Kara. He's oh, you're not a very nice person. Oh, I like your staff. And then he'll just uh, point his staff at him and, and some electricity will crack through it and then sort of like fire out to it. All right, sure. Um, <clears throat> it's a shocking touch or I mean... It's firebolt, but in a shocking... I oh, use right, light, okay. mine's yeah, lightning. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Three, uh, that is a 10 on a dice. It's probably going to be a miss. Oh, it's plus six to hit. 16. Yeah, it's definitely a hit, yeah. Oh, I didn't realise it was plus, plus 16. And that's nine damage. Nine damage. All right, as you look over to him um, and you say something to him, he'll turn back to you and he'll grin because he's finally found someone he can actually kill here. It's like, all right, old man, you want to feel what it feels like to be cut in two? <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, it's like, his whole body just goes static as he just looks straight ahead and he just, oh, oh, and then he just freezes up and he crumples straight forward, almost knocking you over as he falls towards you, Herodotus, but um, from what you can tell, from the smouldering remains of his body, he seems to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay, dear? 
I told you I was a powerful wizard. <laughs> I, I'm good. I like your staff too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, is that end your turn, Herodotus? Um, <laughs> the guy in front of us is charmed, isn't he? Uh, he is, but he's fighting for them. Oh, he's, he's fighting. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll stay where he is. Yeah. All right. Sure. Um, so, <laughs> we've got Pret. Okay, peek right. back around the corner there. Uh -huh. I don't even see Pruitt. Where is he? Uh, I'm right down here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. well, you're down there. Okay. But that, but that's just the point, isn't it? Is that you don't see me? Uh, oh, yeah. So is this guy? That's an enemy, right? Yes. Yeah, that's one of them. Okay. Um, yeah, he'll fire at that guy then. All right, sure. Uh, go ahead. And he's, is he is he still hidden? You didn't roll stealth as a bonus action, but I'll let oh, you retroactively do it if you want. Sure. Yeah. So do that so first. The stealth, his stealth retroactively is nine. A nine, yeah. Unfortunately, they know where you are and they know what okay. you're doing, so they okay. get it. So they know to expect an arrow from there. So in in that case, he'll take another step in. So it's five ten. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll still take a shot at that guy. Yeah. So let me roll that. Okay, it's decent. Uh, seventeen to hit. 17, it certainly hits him. He's currently and, trying to dodge this mace that's been swung on his nose. And since he's adjacent to my allies, it is sneak attack. Yep. So, nice. There we go. There we go. Even more damage. 15 damage. 15? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. You're peppering some of these people. And again, yeah. this thing just flies true. It's almost like an overdraw on the bow. And it just comes out and it just... You see it, uh, both Yarling and Antigonus see it. He's just standing, trying to dodge. And suddenly an arrow gets... Like, implanted in the pillar here an arrow is just st sticking out of that pillar hard like the arrowhead's totally there and from it you can see drops of blood as you all just pause as though you're not quite sure what's happened even the bandits just looking at the arrow and he's like uh, and he looks down and he sees that through his stomach there is just a hole and he puts his hand there and he says <coughs> <coughs> oh, and he just falls back completely dead I fell over. <laughs> <laughs> fell over. <on> the... <laughs> You're killing all my men. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me, literally. <laughs> and Preywood's going to go another uh, 15, 20, and bonus action hide amongst the barrels. And... Okay, roll me stuff roll. Actually, you did that at the start of your turn, so you can't do that, right? You tried to stealth. Oh, is, was that the other one? Yeah, that's your bonus right? action, yeah. Oh, okay. Then mm. yeah, yeah, he'll be here. among them, I guess, and that'll be it. <laughs> All right, sure thing. So, one round to you, Yaling. It's your turn. You just seen this guy try and catch up as he got like completely impaled and then, and then some by the arrow. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> kind of uh, smile at uh, Antigonus um, when he tried to swing, and then when Pruitt obviously shot him, then just kind of looks and like, like just like yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I continue to hold the Tasha Sidious laughter on the man, um, but I will chuck some body inspiration to my girl Larkin. Um, and, uh. <laughs> yeah. Can you explain what it looks like when you're giving body inspiration to someone? Um, you don't so, have to come over it now, I'm just curious. I, I would say, like, when she does it, uh, She's she's probably I mean I'm saying she it's more me I'm not very good at thinking of funny jokes on the spot, um, but uh, she'd probably more like click her castanets and okay. just maybe the wing or raise an eyebrow at them maybe a small smirk feel inspired. Yeah. <laughs> it's a magical thing, so there's no need to actually you know make it an inspiration. So yeah, they do feel sort of a surge of um, I don't know bravery or you know courage or anything or appreciation yeah as you sort of click these castanets at the, <laughs> at the encouraging point. smirk yeah sure um okay but i will uh, just tell you that hideous laughter that you don't require an action to keep it up you just oh about, is it not concentration my bad concentration but you know unless you're casting another concentration spell you don't have to do it. okay um all right uh you can still do something i will is there any men still standing or is it just him just him behind you. Just him behind. Uh, and okay. The Manitor himself is on the floor. Uh, the man behind me. Um, <coughs> I will uh, do some poison spray at him. Okay, sure. Um, as does your racial ability allow. I think that is a at spell? will cantrip. At will cantrip is it spell attack? Yeah, not saving throw. It's a saving throw, right? It's a saving throw. Uh, Thirteen oh, yeah. constitution. Fails. 
So go ahead. 1d12. Yep, that's the one. It's d12s of damage? Dang. Yeah, it's very, very mm -hmm. strong. That's uh, it's, uh, it's five damage. Five damage. Uh, so yeah. with her other hand holding out over the Minotaur, her other hand will kind of turn around to mm -hmm. this guy, and you'll just see this golden with green tints, kind of sparkly, uh, come out of her hand and just go straight into his face. All right. And he just, he's turning around at that exact moment just as it happens. And he just gets this face full of it. And he just goes into a sort of a coughing fit. So there's like, <coughs> <coughs> and it looks as this sort of, you can see he's breathed it in at the wrong moment. And his eyes start watering and going sort of a very veiny red as though he's been pepper sprayed or something. <laughs> he can't breathe. Yeah. I've actually just accidentally given your character pepper spray. <laughs> 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 <Can't breathe. laughs> All right, so does that end your turn? Uh, yeah, that will do, yeah. All right, and him in a fit of panic is going to strike out straight at you as he just swings wildly, hitting the pillar once and then hitting you again, or trying to hit you again with a 16. Yeah, that That's does. It. All right. Sat Upon sorry. that hit, Antigonus reaches his hand out and throws Gift of Clay in front of her to absorb four of the damage. All right, Whatever. sure. He rolled for six damage, and suddenly, as you can see, there's a. it's almost as though time slightly slows down for you, Antigonus. You can see where this scimitar is about to connect with flesh, and suddenly just a form of clay appears there, and it has to dig through that to get to actual flesh first, and it only gets a narrow cut. So it does six damage reduced by four. He has two slashing damage to you there, um, Yelling. Okay. What's your sides? <laughs> the uh, the laughter and grin on her face just instantly drops. <laughs> just... And uh, Stillhorns isn't there because he's still laughing around. So. Oh yeah, he's still here. My hand is still mm -hmm. going. Still going. Uh, <laughs> so <coughs> background to you. I don't think I put this on repeat, Hannah. Um, here we go. Okay. All right. So um, background to you there, Kara. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> step up next to this guy that just attacked yalling and uh -huh. seeing that he's choking i'm going to just take my staff and attempt to crack him right in the throat <laughs> since he's already having <coughs> i'm gonna role playing this guy huh <coughs> <laughs> um yeah go ahead and roll damage no roll damage roll, well, roll the hit yeah. yeah okay i'm gonna use my <coughs> bardic inspiration on that one that's a d4 i roll uh yeah all right so ah uh, that gives me just a five, so I missed real a five. bad. Did you roll a one? Or I what? did. Oh, uh, right. you should, we wouldn't have used your body inspiration then. Yeah, you can announce it if, before I tell you if the roll or it's not. But yeah, for future reference, you know, um, roll, then see if you think it will make it, and then declare to use it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the way it sort of works. But no problems. This time, unfortunately, he is um, currently like, throwing himself around, swinging blindly with a sword, and he does so in such a way that just by pure luck, your staff just swings wide of him. But okay, um, is that in your turn? All right, Antigonus, it's your turn. What would you like to do? You're muted. I'm going to hop over this guy's body, and I'm going to get myself between uh, the Minotaur and uh, most of the rest of the party near this pillar. And then as I'm running that way, I'm going to... Um, take my fingers and, and cause a lot of friction to pull in them and I'll throw that sort of heat from my hand at the man and he suddenly burst into a green flame with sacred flame. Sacred Real good. Flame. Nice Real one. good description. Yeah, I like that. So, uh, that's a saving throw for me, right? Dexterity? Yeah. yeah. 14 uh, dexterity saving throw. That's why, that's why Zach gets the big bucks. If that's on the Minotaur, he also gets to redo his saving throw. I think it's on the no, band, that's on the guy. It's on right. the oh, the guy. Sorry, my yeah. bad. My bad. Okay, absolutely. Uh, he succeeds, so he takes half damage. Okay. So how much damage? I rolled a three, so he would only take one damage. One, five. Yeah. yeah, one damage. So yeah, it just doesn't. It's very. It looks quite, you know, powerful, but it doesn't quite connect him well enough. As it's sort of his um, soggy levers from being at sea all day or being by the ocean seem to sort of dissipate this flame a little. It doesn't quite catch the way you want it to. Um, but yeah, he takes one damage, but he's still spinning around now. He's getting assaulted from all sides. Seems to be in a bit of a panic here. So, um, is that in your turn, Antigonus? Um, I will. Uh, let's see. Yes, that ends my turn. I, I'm sort of more defensive against the, the Minotaur, though. I was doing that as I ran and then pulling my shield up and being ready for the Minotaur to break. 
All right, sure. It's Minotaur's turn, and I have already rolled him. He got a 16, and therefore he manages to go. <laughs> I'm going to kill you all now. And he stands up finally. <laughs> um, as he puts his hand on the um, side of the, the planks, his hand just goes straight through the planks, rotten with wood already, that have just been a miracle that held up so far. And he just looks down with a bit of a panic and steadies himself, but he just managed to pick himself back up. That is his turn, but he can still move. Um, no, he can't. It's the end. The end of his turn. He rolls, so he's still actually prone. Um, but yeah, he has action back to him. But that ends his turn. Um, all right, Larkin, your turn. What would you like to do? Well, um, in the middle of stuffing as much incense as possible into her bag, hearing the Minotaur about ten feet behind her announce his murderous <laughs> intent and stand up, the like she will look over her shoulder with this like spear struck glance and then just pull open the box real quick. All right. Okay. Here and we go. Uh, some creeping curiosity is going to come out. Creeping curiosity. Okay. I like it. So yeah. roll me that 1d100 and see what happens when you open. It did. The box. It's a 21. All right. And um, that fall, like this sort of red color comes out. So it's going to be different than like the typical green and purple kind of coalescing color that normally comes out. Mm -hmm. This time it's very much a, a, a reddish primal color. Um, and she pushes it in his direction. Uh, and the creature must spend the next minute undressing as it falls under the... Uh, oh, no. <laughs> the, the lust category. All right. <laughs> That's fair enough. All right. So, uh, yeah. I think he gets a save, but yeah. Uh, yeah, he does get a save. save. He does get a wisdom save against 14. <laughs> That's, Sorry, that's let me... 16, so... Yeah, I'm gonna... Uh, oh. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm also happy about that, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta get really graphic with this real quick, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I guess bonus oh, action, God. if I can shove any more incense, just hunkering yeah. down, hoping the that's magic fine. does its thing, and <laughs> seeing, it, seeing it fizzle. Uh -huh. Does the Minotaur make any, like, beginning move of undress? <laughs> Just yeah, you can see him sort of very sort of cautiously and hesitantly start putting a hand on his sort of um, leather kilt. Starts, like, quite, Sorry, but yeah. goddamn. Yeah, it's like a terrible scene. It's like as though he's not um, pulling it down. He's rather lifting it up to expose himself. <laughs> but suddenly he catches up and just lets it drop. If and he's wearing it. a kilt, we've probably already all seen it. <laughs> yeah. Well, seeing that Sorry. Larkin has Sorry. released this energy that made him do that, and Ticket is <laughs> just like really looking at me, like, what the hell? You stared at my pants earlier, and now she's like making the Minotaur get naked. He's just I'm scared, scared. Okay? Just, He's a scared, scared snake person in the corner. Leave I, me. I, I think the Minotaur was about to get a free casting of Tasha's hideous laughter on all of us, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, there's D&D &D digs, man. All right, Herodotus, <laughs> it's your turn. What would you like to do? Oh, he'll, uh, be, he'll be about to, to like, jolt this guy in front of him, but he looks at the minor and he goes, oh, I, oh, I don't think he looks very pleased. And uh, he'll be fuddling through his pouches and pull out like a... It looks yellow and sticky, and he's like, oh, that's just disgusting. And he'll flick it towards him, mm. and it'll be like a bit of butter. What's that? All right. And uh, it will just explode at his feet and turn into, like, grease. Grease. Oh, all right. Nice one. So that's a save for me, I think, straight yeah, away. Dex 14. Dex 14 save. That is a success, unfortunately, with a 16 again. It's three 16s in a row. It's still so. there, though. Yeah, it's still there. And if he moves over Ten it, foot he will square. make the same one again. Um, Keeps that enters the area or ends its turn there. So he won't have to make the save again on his turn because he's already in the area. Yeah. So. But he's got to get out first, hasn't he? Yeah, he used to get up. So, is that any turn? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, can I take? Uh, is taking a five foot step action? Does, does that cause an attack of opportunity? If it's away from him, yeah. Okay. You can go there though if you want. Stay in his area of effect. Mm -hmm. If you leave his uh, immediate five foot area, he will get an attack of opportunity. Oh, so I'll stand where I am. All right, Sean. So, Pro it. It's your turn. What would you like to do? Okay, so bonus. Well, okay, let's see. Um, it, would there still be in the crates? Could I still hide there? Uh, you can hide from him. Hey, he seems quite distracted by um, the events going on in front of him. So he's not looking your right. way. You can make the stealth check if you want. 
I'm still going to try and hide so I can see if I can get the advantage on the attack. So, yeah, sure. yeah I'll hide there. Ah, oh, jeez. Uh, no, that's a, that's an eight for stealth. Eight. Yeah, it is cautious sort of measuring of the situation around him. His head is turning, his huge sort of bulbous muscled neck is turning left and right, making sure he can keep anyone. He even locks eyes with you for a moment and grips his axe, but he knows where you are, because that's for certain. Okay. Well, I'll still take a pot shot at him. No sure. sneak attack, I guess. No, there's no one in his immediate vicinity, unfortunately. With my bow. I'm going to aim at his foot to try and uh, prevent his getting up combined okay. with the grease. Yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, you roll with disadvantage, that's... unfortunately. Oh, do you? Okay, yeah. yeah. So let me roll that again then. Uh, that's cocked. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 19 to hit. 19 definitely hits, yeah. Yeah. No sneak attack, right? Mm hmm. Uh, that's five damage, and I hit his foot. All right, sure. And it's uh, his hoof sort of kind of thing, but where it joins to the oh, flesh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's sort of sticking Duh. out, this arrow, yeah. Uh, what was the damage, sorry, again? Uh, five damage. I'll kind of aim for that uh, back tendon. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I see what you're trying to do. Um, the yeah. Achilles heel, if you wish. You know? But yeah, Achilles yeah, tendon. Kinda. Yeah, kind of. I know the tendon. Everyone has the tendon, right? The tendon. What is it, it, is it called is Achilles tendon? Minotaur? No. Uh, it's Achilles heel. <laughs> what does a yeah. minotaur tendon look like? That's the question. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, does that end your turn? Uh, yeah, he already used his bonus action. So yeah, yeah. Um, he'll he'll draw his... I don't think stealth is going to do anything more. He'll, he'll, he'll draw his Gladys at the end. Okay, sure. Yep. Draw his bow. Draw his bow. Uh, right, so Panda, it's your turn. Uh, Panda, sorry, uh, Yalink, it's your turn. Uh, seeing the situation, she's going to she kind of shift over her skirt and really quickly grab a dagger, flip it in her hand, and then go to throw it at the Minotaur, if I may. Yeah. Um, sure. That's a six to hit. The six, yeah. You throw it and it just doesn't reach him. There's not enough power behind it as it just sort of falls at his feet and he looks down at it and says... It's a shame I'm not laughing now. She at least does a cool spin as she throws it. It just doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, naturally, a cool spin. She looks cool, <laughs> just the dagger doesn't do anything. <laughs> Saying I look cool while I do it doesn't make it cool. <laughs> like, no matter what it is. Oh, I, I think I, they I, want I, I disagree. I throw my dagger and it misses entirely, but I look cool. But it's I awesome. look great when I do it. <laughs> sure. All right, so it's the bandit's turn now. This guy's going to keep thrashing around wildly, and I'm just going to... Let's see, I'll roll a 1d4 uh, in clockwise notion to see who he tries to hit. So, as he's throwing around Riley T, that's you, Kara. Uh, as he just swings out his um, scimitar in random directions, trying to catch you with it, he rolls a 20. Ooh. That's definitely going to hit. Sure. The problem with random directions is it's difficult to judge his actions and what he's going to do next. So, you see it, you dodge one way, dodge left, but it'll just catch you right across the center. You take seven slashing damage. All right, that's going to end his turn. But it is your turn, Kara, now. Okay, let me see. Sorry, just a minute. Yeah, sure, no worries. Is that damage in D&D Beyond? Okay. Um, hmm, that sort of changes what I was planning. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Do, do, do. Actually, nah, we'll, 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 we'll wing it. We'll see. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> take my staff and hold it over my other hand and kind of shake it. And the, as the plants sort of shake, a little bit of water will kind That's of trickle cool. out of the plants. And as that water hits my hand, you'll, there'll be a bunch of steam kind of looking like fog and a long piece of ice forms in my hand. Ooh. You see that and throw it at the Minotaur, casting Ice Knife. Ice Knife, very nice. Oh, God. Right, so it'll be a um, attack damage, attack spell. Okay. Yeah. That is going to be a 21 to hit. 21 hits. So he takes both the piercing and the ice damage. I do make a save, doesn't he, for his ice damage? Uh, yeah, deck save. save. Um, so it's a d10 for the piercing. I'll roll that first. Yeah. That's Do you five. get disadvantage on deck saves if you're prone? He sh you should actually have rolled your... Because consider considering it is a spell attack and it's ranged and you're throwing something, you should roll a disadvantage thing, but I don't think it's okay because it's like an mm. explosive thing. So... Um, he rolled an 18 on the deck save, though, so... Okay. Um, uh, but, yeah, the piercing damage certainly hits, and... Um, he takes that was five damage. damage. What's the ice damage as well, then? Um, Six for half of that. Uh, okay, that's 2d6. Let uh -huh. me roll that real quick. So five plus... 
plus I rolled nine, so four. Wow, that's good. So, um... Wait, so you you rolled a nine for damage on the ice knife? Yeah. Oh, I rolled... Oh, is that, is that, that's, the, that's them both together. Five again. for the piercing, and yeah. then I rolled nine for the ice, and oh, right, so, right. half is four. Yeah, so. that's right. Okay, yeah, you're right. You're right ahead of me, actually. I just forgot that it was half. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Does that end your turn? Yes. All right, nice one. Very cool. I like this theme and the dew of the flowers. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. All right, so um, Antigonus, your turn. What would you like to do? Uh, seeing that the fellow behind us is still kicking, I'm just going to sort of looking at the Minotaur, trying to keep him in my gauge, I'm going to uh, swing around and take my mace and try to club this guy in the face as well. All right. Uh, 15 plus 3, 18 to hit. Uh, 18 certainly hits him, yeah. Great. See him swinging then, around randomly. Easy to get a connection with the body shot, certainly. Yeah. And then... Sorry, still getting used to these things. The mace is 1d6 plus 1. 4 plus 1 is 5 damage. 5 damage, exactly what you needed. The mace just connects as you find his chest as he turns towards you. You can feel it, but it feels strange, as though it's hitting a sponge. As it just cracks open his chest plate and just breaks into his body, Mm -hmm. you pull it back, and you just see him take a final gasp of air, and um, he is dead. He falls to the ground. (sighs) All right. That's the little ones. What do we do with the big one? All right. Is that end your turn? Yeah, I'll spin back around again and trying to defend myself uh, uh, against the Minotaur as much as I can. Yeah. Looks at you and he says, it's not the question you should be asking. The question is, what's the big one going to do with you? And he's going to rear up, narrow, pull his head down, Uh-oh. and he's going to charge it. <laughs> and he moves 10 feet towards you, which means he gets to use gore. Um, he sent 20 feet getting up because he's got 50, 40 feet of movement speed, so he's still got 20 left. Five to rear back, and then 15, uh, 10 more to can charge. Can charge through Greece? He can charge through. He's not left the greased area yet, oh. so he can still do that. Um, so, he moves 10 feet towards you, and he hits you with a gore attack on the same turn. Um, so he's going to use his gore attack on you for 18. I, he he hit, starts to say? bore me through, and the clay just, like, steals me down, oh. and he can't pierce through the gore. Shield of faith. Uh, <laughs> All right, so um, the condition for a charge is he has to hit you with a gore attack, uh, and then you take extra damage from it. But fortunately, you feel it, the edge of the horn, just touching on your skin as it gets just through the clay, but it's not enough to break skin. You can feel it, like, pointing into your skin, as though one more little newton of pressure would have made it burst open and blood to cause. But thankfully, you absorb the blow. You're taken off your feet as he just looks that looks from beneath his horns up at you with a bit of shock himself. And he says, he says uh, narrows his, no, sorry, winds his huge teeth and says, been a while since I've had a bit of challenge. But um, you're not the only big one here. <laughs> <laughs> that will end his turn. So Larkin, it's your turn. Um, am I, <laughs> I've collected a sufficient amount of incense at this point. <laughs> You're stuffing your pockets of incense. Oh, just, just <laughs> stack as, as full as possible, just uh-huh. in all of this chaos. I'd say you've got about half of it in, yeah, by this point. There's a lot of it. You've got no, um, sort of scoop or anything that could, that you just get, get it in your hands. It's like picking oh, up. Oh, yeah. Great. So. Um, and we said we needed <laughs> about a full bag is what you're telling me? Yeah. I'm gonna look to prove it real quick. Can you get the rest? And sort of like close her bag as best she can, seeing the Minotaur charge across the room. Uh, can I say something to that or? Go for it. I'm yeah, sort of. So we'll just say, get up and fight. And think of this needs our help. <laughs> sort of head off towards the Minotaur. Um, and as best I can, loop around to get between him and as many of my allies as possible and some okay. sort of like parcel tongue creepy ass shit's gonna come out of her mouth <laughs> um, as the cast cause fear. He's okay. no wisdom save. That is a 16 on the die. So I think it's a success right to say. And Bardic Inspiration couldn't in any way affect the save, yeah? No, oh, yeah, that's uh, that's his role. So uh, that's the fourth 16 number I've rolled for this guy today. Yeah. <laughs> Odd. Okay. And when the bonus actions question mark yeah yeah as you sort of believe... parcel tongues sort of noise out and he'll look down at you and say keep your snake talk to yourself you daft little snake person 
All right. It's not very charismatic. <laughs> Turn, towards <the> <laughs> Turn towards the door as much as I can. All right. Do you actually would take an attack of opportunity from doing? Oh, that. yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So he rolls a three. No. Whatever. Oh, as you just feel like slither right... my way out of that situation. Yeah. As backing off from and turning around, you feel the. Uh, sort of panels of the floor shake as he just buries his great axe where you were standing and he just struggles to pull it out and he's splintered loads of wood and it's all jagged and upwards but he just shrugs it out and he just looks at you and says next one's for you okay that's all my right. turn all right Herodotus it's your turn <coughs> as he try maybe slips on some grease um you're right he did end his turn <clears throat> and, he it there, yes. and I did shoot his foot so but, yeah he actually succeeds the um success on that so um, yeah, 15. <laughs> so, wait, what should they see? 14. 14 right? Yeah, 15. W would the shooting of the foot have done any, have changed that at all? No. Um, I usually allow those things, but it'd have to be a bit of a higher uh, attack roll, I'd say, like probably a crit if you want to start mm -hmm. affecting with mechanics and stuff. Sure. Okay, so, that's yeah. fair. <clears throat> oh, I think he's a bit angry. And I'll just point the staff at him and I'll do, as a joke comes out of it again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that's probably a miss, 10. 10 is a miss, as it just sort of zaps right past him, and he, he's seen this happen to one of his compatriots by this point. So he sees you pointing your staff, and he knows what's coming, so he just turns himself sideways, and it just jumps right past him and hits the hits the sort of crates behind him. Through it, you see like a big sort of um, puff as like Drachmi starts pouring out of one of the crates, which hits the bottom of this jolting blast, but it does miss him. Does that end your turn, Herodotus? Oh, uh, yeah. All right, so uh, run with Pruitt. What's the plan, man? Ah, uh, yeah. So Preywood is gonna dodge around the pillar, go uh, mm. flank, uh, flank the Minotaur with Antigonus. Okay. And just say, retreat is tactical suicide and attack. <laughs> All right. <coughs> oh. <laughs> Eleven to hit. Eleven is gonna be a miss. As you just feel as your um, Gladius just sort of collide with his thick skin, doesn't open a wound. It makes a small sort of incision a small droplet of blood comes out but he doesn't even react to you okay yeah uh, uh well, let's see uh bonus action disengage so you already went 10 15 20 25 All well right. no 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 he'll stay there he'll stay there what am i talking about He's yeah okay sure <laughs> yeah retreat is it's, it's gone about <laughs> Oh, by the way, I'm also going to retreat. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Yarling, it's your turn. What would you like to do? <laughs> uh, she is going to... Where is Larkin? I can't see. Oh, she's she's backed off. That's fine. Yeah. Um, she's going to move to about here if I can. Mm -hmm. um, and then try once again, but this time to throw her. Da 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 da. Yik Ulwa. I think it's pronounced. Is that a type of weapon? Don't you it swear is. at me. Yik it's uh, it says it says it's pronounced yik ul ulwa. Can you spell it? Yeah. <laughs> um it is. I don't know what these. Y K L W A. Y K L W A. Jesus it's Christ. Basically where's a where's holy hand. Where's this spring from? Fucking Call of Cthulhu. What the fuck is it? Y K L W A. It's in D and D Beyond. I'm like, so that's <laughs> the um, weirdest freaking consonant collection I've ever seen. But um, good to know, now I've got something to travel and countdown and stuff. It's, 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 like a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a simple <laughs> melee weapon, um, and it's a three foot wooden shaft with a steel or stone blade up to 18 inches long. It's um, like a short spear kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah pretty much. Okay. Um, she should pick this up. Um, Larkin, don't go near that thing ever again, and she'll just throw it. Um, okay. Try at least. Does a 14 to hit? 14 um, hits. Damn it. Oh, it does hit. Yeah, it does hit, yeah. Oh, good. Whew. I was like, I can't, have, uh, I can't bear the embarrassment. 92 damage. But you look cool doing it. I just love the idea of you throwing all your shit at it and just coughing it. Just keep throwing weapons. <laughs> but okay. um, so that is six damage, please. Six damage, very nice. All right, yeah. As it does sort of connect to them, it stays propelled in him for a certain amount of seconds until it just sort of sort of uh, wobbles and then falls out of his body. But you see like an open wound where it's what's been left there. As that strike hits, I will use my channel divinity. So I see okay. the the pierce moving into the uh, to him, and I uh, use the 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 
friction that that causes, and I heat it up and heat it up and slam my mace down, and Gift of Fire emerges in his body. Oh, right. So he takes some fire damage, I believe, right? Is there any save attached, or? Uh, there is, um, sorry, what did we do, Carl? It's a a dex dex save. Dex save. 14 dex save. Roll the three, so. Ooh, and this one he set on fire as well, so it's 2d10. Jesus. 2d10 immediately, and then... Plus two is 12 fire damage, and he is uh, considered on fire. Yeah, so he has to take an action to put out the fire. If he doesn't, he continuously takes 1d6 damage at the start of his turn. All right, interesting. Very interesting. Wow, that's strong. But yeah, a channel divinity is supposed to be, so I'm happy with that. That's fine. All right, yeah. so... Um, one, one short re- once per short rest right now. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Very cool. Um, that, I just, that wasn't your turn as reaction. So um, now Action. we're on to... Oh, I've lost my eyes on the honor. Now it's um, actually Kara's turn. Yeah. Um, Kara's kind of like, oh, after that <laughs> hit a minute ago, I'm going to mm-hmm. take both my hands and just place them on my chest and the, the green kind of tattoos that she has a lot wrapping along her arms will start to glow and kind of turn into vines with little flowers on them. And the vines will sort of travel down my arms and through my fingertips and into my chest. And I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on myself. Cure Wounds. Very cool. You know, you're giving me heavy Poison Ivy vibes, you know? <laughs> With the look and the... <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> All right, so how much healing you got there? Uh, actually, eight points, and I only took seven damage. So. Very nice. Yeah, okay. back up to full for sure. Yeah, nurturing yourself. You've done this many times before, and you know how to make it work. So definitely very cool. Uh, does that end your turn? Yes. All right, and taking this around to you now, as this thing just suddenly starts... Um, it's as though from this spear and this wound, flame starts to kindle very slowly, and suddenly it catches on his fur, and suddenly a hole up over his torso just begins to spread on the fire. It looks terrifying as he just, the room starts to fill with smoke, and this um, spear on just shows no signs of putting it out, as he just starts to have a loud, like, <laughs> looking at each one and of yet- these. See, seeing him on fire, Antigonus' expression moves from a little bit of sweat and worry, and now I'm in my, I'm at home. I see the flames burning, and it brings something inside of me. I take my mace and drag it across my shield. Sparks fly. They all gather in the air to one big uh, spark, and it surges at him at a guiding bolt. Guiding bolt. Wow, you're bringing the damage heavy today. Ah, gonna... guys. What's that? Is that a spell? Oh, he's all tanking. Tank. Keeping in mind, he's on fire on top of a grease spell. <laughs> it's interesting. But he's not technically on top of fire on top of a grease spell. He's, he's, he's on fire on top of a, a butter smell spell. <laughs> it smells delicious in here. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Looks oh like God, it's on the menu. Well, do you, do you have any pancakes? <laughs> uh, the total there is 9 plus 6, which is 15 for Guiding Bolt. 15. Very nice. And he, um, it was the... Um, did you make Is an attack hit? roll? Yeah, that's oh, the, that's 15 to hit. Roll. Right, uh, 15 hits, yeah. Yeah, all right, 4d6. <laughs> Real damage. Uh, going 5, on. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 total damage on Guiding Bolt. Very nice, nice. yeah. And um, as he sort of starts stumbling around now, you can see him's getting a bit panicked himself. He glip- grips his two-handed axe in both hands, and taking us... Um, he can't do anything other really than go for you at this point. This lets out a huge bellow of rage. He'll roll his one. Is it you rolling the one d six or is it me? Oh, we need is some garlic. We could have some garlic uh, butter with beef. Yeah. Which one? We could do it either way. Uh, oh, you yeah. roll your spell. So yeah, go ahead and roll one d six. Uh, three damage. Three damage. Yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, he does not pull out the flames at all. It just continues to burn against his uh, fur, and you can see it sort of leaving patches of scarred, sort of open uh, red tissue. Where it's traveling along his skin, it takes three damage, but he's gonna swing out at you with his great axe. Oh, I was so hoping that's what he's six. I don't want to kill you, I just think it's always fun when a boss crits. But okay, 15 does that hit? No, can't yeah. even get close to me. I'll roll my damage to see what happens anyway. You would have taken 30 damage, almost <laughs> enough to one shot you out of the game, boy. <laughs> <laughs> if that was the thing, it would one shot almost anyone in this party out of the game. Um, yeah. half yeah. anyway. But okay, that's the sort of DM fun thing. Oh, my monster missed. I want to scare the party anyway. Have a look at this. <laughs> All, right, <laughs> All right, that ends his turn as he can't really do anything like that. He is ending his turn on top of a grease, though. So I will roll his dex, which is 13. I think that's a fail. Foul. 
Yep. So, yeah, he drops prone uh, on the grease spell. It's just displaces his balance while swinging this great axe and his hoof tries to catch and he just falls again and now his sort of lower half is falling into the water as the actual wooden planks that are surrounding him start to give way all the sort of holes he's left to start with his axe with his hoof everything that he's sort of planted they start to crack underneath him he starts trying to grab and stabilize himself as the floor opens up beneath him but he is still here just clinging on for his dear life but that ends his turn he is prone and on fire so Larkin it's your turn all right. Um, sort of still in this this fear <coughs> expression, even as a yowling steps in front, throws and things seem to be falling apart. Just gonna extend a hand and just this crackling purple green energy will sort of spiral around her arm and sort of release at the last moment, but aiming it at the floor rather than him, hoping to just sink him into the ground yeah. and end, end this as if possible. So would you have me to, to hit the floor? Um, I'd say you can hit the oh, floor. Oh, maybe a weak spot on the floor? It's pretty easy to hit the floor on him. So all I've done if you do is roll damage against the floor's hardness. So. Uh, it's a Let's just roll it on here. What are you actually using to do it with? Again, what spell is it? Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast. Okay, it's force damage. So that That's is... Nine, nine force damage. <laughs> definitely available. Yeah, absolutely. As um, you pinpoint this perfect Good. moment to do it. Uh, and you just let out this huge wave of force like, at him. Um, and yeah, cracking the floorboards underneath his upper half, he just looks with a certain panic and suddenly the floor beneath him cracks again and his huge upper body just lets out with a huge, like very almost cavernous sound of an echoing splosh right beneath him as he sinks into the water, instantly putting out the flames as he just looks up, dropping his great axe into the depths. He still starts to tread water. He's still not so close to death that he's just completely out of it. He just looks up and you can see the last thing that you see is another hand reach up and come over the top of the planks and then another over the top of the planks as he tries to pull himself up, but he'll try and do that on his turn. Does that end your turn, Larkin? No, so seeing that, she's gonna like glance at Yaling, like sort of scurry past where he, he is, just casually kick at one of his hooves and then go back to the open bin of incense. <laughs> <laughs> I would let you do that as an action, but yeah, it's just a flavor. No, no, just right sort of like, yeah, yeah, I got you. Like a bonus little. Yeah, uh, yeah. It hurts your toes more than it hurts his hands. These huge the bug muscled, muscled, yeah. muscled fingers. It's like kicking like a, a curb when you kick this guy. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So, um, Herodotus, it's your turn. Um, he'll walk up to about here. Obviously, at the edge of things, to see his fingers, and he'll start like get his staff and poke his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> But like <laughs> putting a jolt of electric are his hands wet? Um they would be wet, yeah. I'll stick on a jolt like a lightning jolt down it. Alright. Roll with advantage then if yeah. he's uh, you know if he's like if he's wet. So. Oh well that's I rolled a ten and eleven, so it's seventeen. Um yeah, I'll those you roll ten and eleven on dice, right? Yeah, so seventeen hits, yeah. Zapping uh, one of Five hands. damage. Five damage and that hand does let go and he only has one hand that's holding him on anymore. Um, so five damage, what have we got here? Twin. Okay, yep, does that end your turn? Yeah. All right, so, um, Carl, it's your turn, Carl. Uh, <clears throat> pray, pray with, sorry. <laughs> Crumming, yeah. <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna waltz over to that other hand mm -hmm. and stabby, stabby, stabby. Oh, all right. That's so... weird, my character went into the pillar and all of a sudden his vision was nothing. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> wow, trippy, man. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the is oh, this the first like attack since like Guiding out. Bolt? <laughs> um, it is the first physical attack on him, except for the. Um, it says the next attack, right? But I guess we would have incorporated that into things turn. But no one's used it yet, so I'll allow it this once. But yeah, keep an eye on that type of stuff. Oh, it is yeah. next attack roll. So I thought it was next melee yeah. attack. Okay, so it should uh, have been uh, Herodotus. Herodotus. Yeah, but we forgot, so I'll let Prayer use it now. Okay, okay. So advantage on the attack. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Uh, 24 to hit. Uh, yeah, I don't need to tell you. The 24 is suddenly a hit. So go ahead and roll damage. Oh, snake eyes. Okay. Uh, uh, five damage. Five damage. You're in the presence of allies there. So. Yeah. 
You can sneak attack, right? I think. No, it was sneak attack. I got snake eyes. Oh, oh right. Wow. I got two terrible. ones. <laughs> right. Two damage. Yeah, I'm going to say with two damage, it's not enough to let him make him let go. Like he's at the point now where he knows if he lets go, it turns really bad for him. So through pure strength of will and constitution, he manages to not let go, even though his fingers are being stabbed. So he's just there holding on. You can feel it sort of still splitting beneath him as he looks up at you with hate in his eyes, pray with and say, and I'll say, I'll drag you down with me. Unless something else happens, Preywood is going to maintain the Gladys in mm -hmm. this Minotaur's hand. Sure thing. All right. Oh, yeah, you stuck it in and you're keeping him that type yeah. thing. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, so uh, Yaling, your turn. What would you like to do? So he has one... Did Larkin successfully... Yeah, he's got one hand on here and it's got a Gladys sticking out of it, so... <laughs> okay. Um... Uh, when I hit him with my, uh, let me see how I pronounce this again. Not hard oh, to pronounce. Okay. Here we go. Yukulwa. Fucking Cthulhu for targeting Yukulwa, however the fuck this thing's called. My, my thingamabob. Uh -huh. Um, I'm going to take that out. And if I can, can I stab it in his head? You can certainly try. Yeah, go ahead. Is he still still looking up? This thing's got the reach to try and get him in the head. So yeah, as he's sort of still trying to pull himself up, so. That is a 17 to hit. 17 hits him, no problem. And that is 6 damage again. 6 damage, nice. Okay, yeah. Not enough to make him let go. He's just feeling all this stuff hitting him in the head. He's still holding on with his fingers. They're still quite lively, even though he's bleeding from almost every area. Can I point. just keep doing it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Every, just keep, like, you don't do 6 damage, you do 6 times 1 damage. Why? Just, like, I don't... You me, die. You know? <laughs> 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 okay, so uh Kara, it's your turn. <coughs> okay, um I'm going to step over the body of the dead guy in front of me. And as I do, I'll just kind of spin my hand around like this, creating a flower materializing out of nowhere using my bonus action to cast with Druid mm -hmm. Craft and just drop the flower on the dead body as oh. I step over and approach the Minotaur. Sure. And with my actual action, I'm going to take my staff and just slam it right down on his knuckles. <laughs> I just love it. I'm just going to be peaceful saying goodbye to this guy, rest in peace, and then I'm going to go over and... <laughs> <laughs> all right. It was all about the balance. balance you know. mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and roll an attack then, obviously. Uh, not 20. <laughs> not 20, very nice. So that, that's definitely going to um, take his fingers off there. Or like, So go ahead and roll damage. Okay, let's see if that's... Uh, 8 plus the 3 is 11 damage. 11, okay. So yeah, um, very nice, very nice indeed. As you crack his finger bones, you can feel them under the weight of your staff. Just like two, the, the little finger and the ring finger just buckle under the staff and you can feel the staff sort of go through the skin and touch the wooden floor beneath as though you've gone through straight bone. But it does make him let go and he just falls back into the water with another loud splash. But he does pull himself to the surface, the water around him turning a thick red now as he's got all sorts of woo open wounds and he's trying to paddle and breathe for air. He just looks up at you with a panic and desperation, but it's Antigonus's turn. I look down at him and I say, um, this is your moment to decide. Honorable death or dishonorable cowering and we'll help you back up. <laughs> All right. Are you going to uh, defer to him on his turn then? I'm going to hold Sacred Flame to see whether or not he uh, he decides to beg for his life or whether he uh, decides to aggressively come back up. So if he makes any aggressive move forward sure. on the Sacred Flame. Then. Sure. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I'm rubbing right, my yeah. fingers, just waiting for it to happen. Like all bullies, he's a coward in true heart. And as Antigonus, you say down this to him, he doesn't want to die here. He just says, all right, you've got me. Please help me up. And he puts up one of his huge paws to you, Antigonus. Uh, do I do I believe him? <laughs> yeah, inside, inside check. <laughs> Natural 20. Uh, Natural 20. Plus, he is plus, trying to drag plus. you to the briny depths, man. Uh -huh, you can see yeah, that so... there's a sudden and narrowness in his arching of his eyes. Still, the hate is there. You don't believe him. He is going to try and bring you down with him. Yeah, so I, I just shake my head and say, uh, Prometheus, guide you to the next life. And I release the sacred flame. 
Okay. He says, no, no, please. I didn't. And then go ahead and... This is where he fucking... It does no damage. He doesn't die, right? So he got 17 on the deck save, so he takes half damage. He, um, he succeeds, yeah. Um... It was two damage, so just two one. Damage. So yeah, it's an awkward moment where you think it's gonna <laughs> kill him. And he just sort of sits there in the water and it sort of tickles his face again. But it's like <laughs> burns scar is half of his face, obviously. It's a significant burn on him. As he just looks up at you with another pained expression. Um but it's his turn now and what he's gonna do is he's gonna hmm reach up again and try and grab onto the sides of the thing. He's still being poked down, almost jabbed down by everybody now, but he's not trying to pull himself up anymore. He sinks his fingers into the uh, floor underneath you, Herodotus, and he just tugs down on the planks. And he's going to... Um, he doesn't need to roll for this effectively. You make, make a deck saving throw, though, Herodotus, as the um, the floors beneath you are just pulled into the ocean. So go ahead and roll a deck saving throw. Am I able to aid him at all, or is it...? Mm. I'll say... I, mm, you know what? No. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I don't need to explain anymore. It just <laughs> I didn't realise I was muted there. As a reaction, I cast Featherfall. <laughs> the hell? All right, that's fair enough. Uh, do you want to make the deck save though, anyway? Or? I can do, yeah. Deck and save then... six on the dice. <laughs> six on the dice. Um, you can roll with advantage because I didn't know you were going to Featherfall. So in which case, I would have allowed Yarling the chance to grab you because you're. That's better. Eighteen total. 18 total, yes. Yeah. So, with the floor collapsing beneath you, you manage to cast the feather fall as quickly as you start falling. It's just, just about six or seven feet from the, um, not six, seven feet, like three or four feet from the bottom of the warehouse to the ocean surface. You begin to fall, but within that one foot of second time, you manage to cast a feather fall. And then, Yarling, you're given the chance quickly to just snag him out of the air as he's falling. But, um, yeah, the manatee never actually grabbed you, so you don't have to contest his strength. Oh, thank you, my dear. I didn't want to get wet. It's all right. Get back up now. Being that he's far away from you there now, um, and he's not effectively in the range of any of you because he's down there, um, he's going to try and swim away. <laughs> so he's going to go at um, 20 feet. So 5, 10, 15, 20. Underneath the... Foot. Isn't it half move? <coughs> That's what it was, yeah. Oh, really? He's got 40 foot, 40 foot of movement speed. Ow! Could I put up... Can I pick up my dagger that landed on the floor earlier and try and throw it again? Uh, you can on your turn, which is not quite yet Larkin, it's your turn. As you just, you just see underneath the surface of the water, this huge form that's surrounded in red water, just start moving towards the shore. Is is the pole on the floor large enough that he's still like in sight? Or is he is he um, long since out of sight? Good question. Uh I'd say you would he'd have uh, half cover against you. Okay, I pretty much as he's moving, she's going to have attempted to take one of like the heavier barrels that doesn't seem to have whatever right. cursory <laughs> glance of like what's what's valuable, what's not, and then attempt to just, can you just go away already and just shove a barrel, like have it land on him just haphazardly. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Um, I say roll an improvised weapon, so just roll me a d20 plus a strength saving, strength modify. Plus a, a strength modifier, uh, which I think is safely nothing. So, uh, mm. a solid two. Yeah, solid two. <laughs> not, not great. As um, you roll in a Come barrel, uh, uh, seems to be trying to roll with, it. Um, yeah, yeah. So like, seems to feel like wine or something. Not too expensive, like a cask of like wine. It just sort of pops into the water, but he manages to dodge it. It sort of rolls off his back as he just um, like manages to put himself straight up as it falls and then resume swimming as it messes. Yeah. Uh, are we, All right. are we still in combat at this point? <coughs> like, officially? Um, yeah, I mean, until he gets off the map. So Herodotus, it's your turn. Okay. Well, Herodotus is just like, I suppose at the same time, still floating there midair with mm -hmm. Yarlin's hand on his collar, light as a feather. And as he's like, <laughs> and then he just uh, tries to zap him. All right, sure. <laughs> you think he'll lower it down oh. like, the staff so. yeah. <laughs> and try and zap him. Do I still get advantage as he's in water? Uh, no, not this time, unfortunately. Oh. He's, in a, he's in a body of water, so it doesn't oh. quite work the same. Oh. If only jolt work, like electricity worked. <laughs> yeah, but it's the, it's the effect of like, comparatively like dropping well, a toaster. I got a 17 total anyway. <laughs> a 17? Yeah, 11 oh, plus right. 6. Yeah, that's definitely hits. So go ahead, oh, 9 damage. damage. 
nine damage, yeah. <laughs> As he's just managing to reach the shore, you can see him pulling himself. He's got to the point now where the depth of the water isn't is, um, dwarfed by his own height. So you can see his body sort of lurching up out of the water. He turns around and looks at you aiming the staff, and he already knows what's going to come out of that. And he just pauses, and his eyes widen. As he just goes, No! <laughs> come back, there goes our dinner! Yeah, he's sort of holding this chain of lightning on him for like a good three or four seconds. He just constantly like, duh, duh, duh. and as it sort of um, smoke starts to pour off his body, the lightning actually like vaporizing the residual water from the ocean on his fur until it just comes up with a thick steam around him as he just gets fried there. I can as, just um, imagine my hair all like statically shot, like, pull my beard just, out. If I'm still holding, am I like? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he falls back into the Crazy water. Crazy old Palpatine. And he, um, oh my gosh. he is dead. Congratulations. Killing a Minotaur party. So yeah. Um, tab- uh, the tavern, sorry. The warehouse is like full of smoke. It's holes in the floors everywhere. There's body, there's blood. There's fur, there's jolts of lightning and flame that have scarred the surfaces. But you are alive, at least. Um... May I investigate this room for any other goods besides the incense? Yeah, sure. Go ahead and roll me an investigation check. Sure thing. In kind of the immediate aftermath of the battle, Preywood is kind of catching his breath, looking around, and just giving kind of everyone an approving look. Uh, You handled yourself well in battle. (laughs) I did tell you I was a powerful wizard. You did. I did not believe it, but you did. (laughs) That is a 15, 15 investigation. Yeah. Uh, you've got plentiful time now to go through these boxes. Just you'll see. killed mm-hmm. a minotaur. Larkin's still sort of like a little shocked by this. And no one seems as phased as she is. and just <laughs> Yeah, Larkin's just <laughs> like seeing the minotaur die, puts her just down and just gone... Right, what's in this box? <laughs> uh, you, put her, you put Herodotus down? Because I'm pretty sure you were lowering him into the seat. Oh, yeah, well, I'm going to All right, you're no, pulling him. He's as light as a feather, he right? Just dropped him in the ocean and go over to the loot. Just, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so, yeah. Um, yeah she's she joined. Uh, right, with a 15 uh, investigation, you find some silks that, you went, upon closer inspection and taking them out, you see to be the stolen vestments from the temple. And below that, you'll see a smaller box filled to the brim with drachma. Um, and with that as well, you find not only the incense that you've been scooping in, but another smaller box of incense alongside it as well. Um, along with things like several trinkets and necklaces and earrings that, you know, was been um, left by patrons for the temple who didn't have directly to offer. Uh, you estimate the total value of those to be around... Someone doing party loot? 32 drachmi between the jewellery. And about 120 drachmi in the actual chest. So, um, I, I, someone keep track of it for now. And we'll nominate a party treasurer. Yeah. You know, while they're I've... doing investigation, I'll be uh, I'll cast a ritual detect magic. Yeah, sure, you can cast detect magic, um, but nothing pings you up as you sort of look around after this sort of ritual casting of. Anything at the bottom of the ocean? Mm, nothing actually right there at the moment. No. Is someone keeping an eye on this? The party loot. The beef burger. Uh, well, so far you've got 32 golds, 32, 32 gold. Yeah, well, I'm going to just go, going to go gold for the sake of clarity when we're doing loot. 32 gold worth of jewellery and 120 gold of actual drachmi coins. Uh, um, how much in actual drachmi? 120. Okay. Million. And 32 from the collected <laughs> sort of not, not too great jewellery, just simple things. And then you've got, um, we'll say, six silk vestments. And you've got... Um, through the uh, incense as well. And if you're on these bodies or... Yeah, you'll find a collections of scimitars that they were using in battle. Um, but beyond that, it's just simple clothing. Okay. <coughs> While all this is going on, Antigonus has just fallen to one knee, grabbing his holy symbol and silently praying and thanking Prometheus for that <laughs> very close call. <laughs> Life. Hey, uh, uh, Anthe. Um, thank you for uh, protecting me earlier. Thank Prometheus. He gave me these powers. I couldn't tell you why. If we were in the same legion, you'd be getting a promotion right now, Antigonus. Very well done. Is everyone well, all right? Larkin, you stood by a minotaur. He was fighting and you stood in front of him. What were you doing? 
Well, I was trying to do something, but it clearly didn't work. We've spoken about this. I'm no, talented, not, not and I can make a difference. Kind of... You should learn, Larkin. She's just gonna sit down and like start, or like crouch down and start like rifling through one of the bodies. It's... Mm. Yeah, um, Herodotus so... is by the hole on his mm. knees and like touching the butter. And, oh, yeah, it is butter. Yeah. <laughs> Can't and, believe then, it's and, then it, and eventually it just dissipates. Can't believe it's <laughs> blood butter. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it's not butter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. Um, going right through the bodies there, um, Larkin, you find on one of them six drachni, which you put in his pocket. Sweet, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so Came full circle. Still there. Uh, on the others, you'll find. I'll get my right die out here. This one. Uh, that one. Uh, one's got one drachmy, and the other one's got another one drachmy. So, total of eight drachmy on the bodies there. Okay, okay. Oh, and Dariala, who would have, I would say, a die higher drachmy. So, four, dra- four drachmy on um, Dariala, who's a more accomplished feat than the others. Any like daggers or like loose, <coughs> loose sort of scraps or things like uh, she'd find interesting? Um, Dariana has um, several sort of. Uh, little daggers that she has all over her body, similar to the way you two kind of do. Um, sure. But they're all very small, uh, very simple, very sort of, you know, hold out weapons, pretty much. If I yeah. can take one of the daggers, because I ha- I can dual wield, so if I can dual wield daggers, that'd be awesome. Yeah, sure, oh, you've got plenty of them, so. As you're scolding me, like, and she's stifling through, you'll get tossed one, just like, <laughs> just catches it, <laughs> puts it in her, like, Thigh arsenal of all sorts of gear oh. continues scolding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know, just still pulling things off the body and getting yelled at. <laughs> all right, sure. So, with that, that's pretty much all that you're going to be able to find in this warehouse. Is, um, it just looks like it's ready to fall over at any moment. So, and for anybody who's looking, uh, you guys can see that, you know, the, so uh, Prewit has a blonde mullet. Um, right now it is damp and like to his head. <laughs> so he, he is very, he's very wet. He's drying off during the, this whole search, but, but yeah, he's very wet. <laughs> fair, fair enough. <clears throat> I imagine once a few minutes have passed and we've sort of looted the, the place and settled a little bit. Um, so how are we going to get, are we just going to roll this back through town? Tell Part them to come get it. We'll take the boat. There's more gang members. I don't think they're... Well, I could be wrong, but... Uh, there's a minotaur floating in the water. I don't think they'll bother us. Uh, Yelling will start getting the blood of the... Enemy, like the people we killed. Because she, she was quite far back from the combat, but she's going to start almost putting the blood on her. To make it like she she did some stuff. Ah, got yeah. Look okay. look nice and tough. Yeah. <laughs> yes, if they cause a problem, you? we will uh, cut off the Minotaur's head and present that to them. I think the uh, blood may be enough. <coughs> Necessary. Yes, it might be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Larkin's just gonna start like going over to the incense barrels, like after we've checked the boxes for loot, obviously, um, mm. and just start like rolling one towards the door. Right, yeah, sure. You're absolutely able to roll the barrels, definitely enough. Yeah, Preywood is helping. Like, he seems rather practiced at pillaging. So he's, uh, you know, helping put all the gems, uh, all the loot into the into the boat. <laughs> mm. Yeah, uh, which boat are you talking about? Sorry. The, yeah, the, the you boat. came on a small boat, didn't you? No. No, we walked on, like, the docks. Oh. I yeah, th- yeah, okay, yeah. never mind then. Uh, yeah. He's going to put as much in his pack then as he can. <laughs> yeah. Where, I'm going to drag the fruits token over here to get a good, a better sense, like, idea. Yeah, that, that was my bad. Uh, right, no worries. Yeah, yeah okay. okay, so, um, moving with that then. Um, you managed to carry everything pretty, um, pretty successfully. The only thing left to do is really take it back to who's owed it. And what you do with this, which is you can assume to be the temple's gold, is up to you. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. But, yeah. It's basically as this is going on, you'll have seen several people, more rough characters from this neighborhood, looking round, and they'd have seen the final act of the. Um, it was actually quite fortuitous that he fell through the water and got killed there because he died in the audience of several people around town, seeing him at the coastline, pulling himself up, only to get jolted by the last second and fall back into the ocean. The tyrant of uh, Xenopolis, Spearhorn. Is his been... body still there? 
It is still there, yeah. There's no magic aura coming off of him or anything? No, no. He's just a simple guy. He hasn't even got his weapon anymore. After Gowling finishing just gonna... Antigonus, we'll uh, walk out the door and look at all those people like sort of looking around at us and sort of bellow in his deepest orc voice, that's all for tonight. Show's over. Yeah. And uh, many people yeah, do, show's kind of scatter over. As you, <laughs> many people scatter as you say this. Um, Yarling looks disappointed at her castanets who is about to perform for the crowd. <laughs> yeah, just, just the room, Yarling, I think, on this one is <laughs> sort of thing. But yeah, okay. Uh, it seems like a clear cut path through these people now. Yeah, the, it's kind of a comical sight. Uh, Preywood's backpack is bulging full of gems, and he's carrying the barrel in front of him. He's actually pretty strong, but the barrel kind of dwarfs him. He's got the strength to carry it and the discipline, but yeah. <laughs> Just marching back to the temple with all the loot. You know, sure. not, not not all the loot, but what he can I get. I got you, yeah. You got your loot, and <laughs> no. you're going back to the temple, making your way through the town. People are, um, it's the same. Not, not not everyone in town has been witness to this, so they don't know how much you've helped them. So they're still quite wary of you. Uh, but you do manage to make it back to the temple. Is anyone not joining the party on the way back to the well, temple? Herodotus will be walking back with the others. I, I've never sure. seen such a s strong child before. I just keep walking. As, as we like leave the area and like the Minotaur is still in in view, I want to like pick up a rock and just chuck it at him for like <gasps> posterity right. purposes. Make I wanted a, to uh, do that too. Give me a dex throw. Uh, okay. <laughs> just a dex roll. Uh, <laughs> plus my modifier, uh, eleven plus three, so fifteen. 14, 15, My math. Yeah, he's a stationary target. He's a big guy. You just see it sort of Blink. like bounce off his sort of thick spongy back hide and then just bounce off and then plop into the ocean sort of just like smiles at that as like he keeps 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 going until he gets to the temple he gets up and he's been faking it the whole time and he charges <laughs> <laughs> I, look, I, look to we, uh... I say what's your beef <laughs> so use the word beef <laughs> i'll uh, i'll look over at larkin and say um on the way back i uh, Sorry, uh, sorry, you didn't take his clothes off. I know that's kind of what you were hoping for there. I, I think you and I have a very big misunderstanding. <laughs> oh, I don't know how roll, big it is. Roll a little faster. <laughs> all right. Yeah, Yarling's just snicker under her breath. When we when we get to the temple, um, is the boy outside still? They are there still, and they seem to be using this temple shelter as sort of their place to sleep, it seems, that they're here most of the time. But most notably out there is um, the Pythian and the High Priestess, Hesia, as they both look at you, um, carrying obviously more loot than you left with, so they can only assume that the problem's been dealt with. They look at the welcome you back, and uh, Hesia sort of clasps her hands to her um, to chest, and she's just like, "Oh, you found them! You found it all! Did you did you find the gold? Did you find did you find the vestments?" Yeah, we found the incense and some little knickknacks of jewelry. Only deception check. <laughs> right, right. Okay, <laughs> it's not a nat one, but it is a two. Let me see. Uh, deception. <laughs> it's a six. Seeing her <laughs> instantly floundering, just she's just. We found, I think, pretty much all of it. But <laughs> of course, you are owed a reward for your services to the temple. If you can want, you can take half of the gold. But we do need it for our unfortunate friends here at the temple. Temple steps. Sure, but next time, you could have warned us he was a minotaur. Oh, did I not mention he was a minotaur? Yeah. No, well, not I didn't know who Doralia was working with. I know Donalia was was I, had short red hair. I didn't know she was working with um, the Minotaur. I Inside. don't want to insult you, priestess. Inside, Inside check if you want. Uh -huh. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to insult you, but the poor people who reside outside seem to think that you don't really help them in any way. Um, you don't why? aid them, you don't give them money. We, we try our best with what we have. This is not the most wealthiest of towns. It's a 17 on insight. 17 on insight. She's been sincere. She didn't know that, you know, she was working with this person. But yeah, with this, the Pythia is going to look to each and every one of you and say, enough squabbling over gold. There is important matter to do here. Something I've promised you all is an explanation. And I can show you now if you've got the incense, everything else is prepared. 
Yelling will just kneel down, kind of nodding to the Pythia, um, and we'll go to the boy. That man who uh, chased you before, he won't do it again. Still don't go by the docks, but I think Larkin has something she wants to tell you. Oh? Uh, yeah. Oh, right. The guy, yeah. Oh, um, he won't chase me anymore. Why? Did you did you break his legs? Oh, did you cut them off? Ooh. He has no use for legs anymore. Oh, why? Is he like a fish now? What What happened? He might as well be. He's sleeping with the fishes. <laughs> He's sleeping with fishes? I don't think fishes sleep very much, though. What do you mean he's sleeping with fishes? That's where he rests You ask now. your parents about how you, you can get lucky. Ask them if you can sleep as well, sleep with things. I need to ask the parents if I can get lucky with a snake and sleep with fishes. Yes, there you are. Okay, I'm going to do that. Larkin! I'm, I'm going to report back. <laughs> with what I know. And he sort of scurries off down into the I down. threw a rock at him. Okay. Uh, Harry, um... I just let him run off. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot you wanted to talk to him. No, you're fine. No, that's, that's all good. That, that, that's perfect. With all this um, incense, is Herodotus able to, like, ask for, like, some of it? Like, ten gold pieces worth of it? Um, the Pythia will look to you and say, if there's anything left over, you're welcome to it. But oh, even if you. those 10 gold pieces are the difference between the spell working and not, I cannot promise you. So I need to use what I need, then I can give you the remainder. Okay, Herodotus? In the meantime, I must suggest haste. I don't know how long we have. And where, where do you want to do this? I have everything prepared. Please follow me. Follow me. The haste is of the utmost importance. Aquilus, please, see to them. And uh, Aquilus will just... Um, motion you all to come with him with a big wave of his arm forward. Wherever she leads us, Larkin is just going to dump the incense from her backpack at the Pythia's feet. Just like... Okay, sure. And Aquilus, seeing that that's happened, he'll actually be the one to shoulder that weight. He'll pick it up and he'll make his way to the um the room. And... Well, well wherever, wherever it's going, I'm not going to just do it as we're walking. Oh, right. Like, Sorry, yeah, a little bit more politely than that. that. Yeah, after you got yeah, there. Yes. So sure, she actually leads to where you slept. This sort of side on um, um, sort of small temple that's next to the other temple the big temple um and all the cushions have been thrown to the side and there's only four braziers in each of the corners and around there's been what seems to be sort of like a chalk line drawn in a large spiral a huge spiral all the way down circling right into the center where there's just six uh, sorry seven spots there ready in motion the pythia says right scatter the incense around the spiral and then um, she does her own part and takes her thing and she starts making her way around from the center. And as you're doing it too, I think, Larkin, it doesn't take long before the spire is completed and full of incense. The room is dark. There is only these four very dimly lit braziers that are filling it. And as the incense is completed, she looks to each one of you and says, please take your positions. The ritual is very taxing. And I feel something in the air that tells me we don't have long. Pythia. Just yes. sort of take a moment, just sort of like really make like a pointed eye contact with her. You can see she's nervous just from the very look of her head, like breasts are rising and falling with very shallow breaths that she's taking. She's just like, and she's got a very sort of a thin layer of sweat that's sort of coating her skin. Sure. Like all, all sort of the like joking manner has sort of fallen mm -hmm. off of Larkin's face and she sort of just makes, again, pointed eye contact and reads her expression a little bit. And mm -hmm. then we'll say, make sure you're honest with us. And that's I, it, and then just sort of take her spot. I have one thing that I'm hiding from you. And I can admit that, but it is for good reason, and I will reveal you it to you all tonight. But first, the ritual must take place. Believe me, it will cause you no harm. And Diggin okay. is, uh, nods to her and, and walks over to his position. At this time, Shield of Faith wears off, and so you see the uh, clay particles from his skin start to like shake off like a dog and kind of fall away. <laughs> it becomes green again. All right. Perfect. Yeah. And as you do, sort of more relaxed sort of stature over you with this sort of more natural look to you again and to get us now. And she sits down in her position at the head of the seven sort of circle thing, and she just points to each one and like sort of you can still see her quite worried and even at the side of the room Hesia the arch the arch priestess the head priestess of the temple is looking on with worry herself Aquilus holds a sword at the opening to the temple making sure nobody else can get in yeah Prebot will also take his position 
So will Yelling. As will Kara. All right, sure. So as you guys sort of approach this circle around, there is nothing in the center. It's just all each of you looking at one another and she'll even say, take time to study each of your expressions. Take time to study each of your friends that you have made. When it happens after this ritual, you will be changed the same way I was changed. And like you, I did not ask for this. It was thrust upon me, but I can only apologize for that. Hesia, begin. Hesia just suddenly lets out a startled shock and she goes, yes, 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 my dear, yes, my dear. And um, she'll take uh, some kindling of uh, dried wood and put it to one of the braziers to light it. And she'll put it down to the incense in the spiral. And it just slowly begins to fizzle along the ground, sort of like more like um, like a fuse, like of incense. So it doesn't pay attention to the normal rules of incense, but you see the smoke rising from where it is, but there's no specific fire. It's just smoke that comes out from the incense as it circles the room, and suddenly the braziers just fill the room with well, braziers. The incense just starts to fill the room with this thick, sweet smelling smoke. It smells like cinnamon or some far off spice. And as you breathe in, you can taste it on the inside of your throat and down your lungs. And it even makes you elicit sort of a slight cough, but it fills with this thick, almost fog like smoke, begins to fill the room. But you can still see each other. But the Hesia, the priestess, and Aquilus are lost in the side of the smoke, as you can barely even see the sides of the room anymore. You can just see the dim lit light of the braziers through the smoke. And she just looks at each one of you and says, This will change you all. Are you ready? Yes. She uh, looks to each, to each one, every one of you. And she just says, then let it begin. <sighs> and she lets that is I'm gonna a grab uh, Yelling's hand at this point and sort of just Yeah, and hold hands. <laughs> mm-hmm. Whatever you see, whatever you feel, do not leave the circle, or you will be lost to us all. And as this happens, the smoke in the room, the incense smoke begins to swirl around you like a slow motion tornado. It just begins to work its way around you like in a dome over your heads now. And even the lights of the braziers get dim, but you can still see each other in this residual sort of moon glow that's on the inside of the incense. And she looks to each of one, one of you and you can see a smile beginning to fade. This sort of very sort of that she got what she wanted and she's, but it's beginning to fade a little as the smoke just dissipates very slightly at first you can see certain things through the smoke it looks like a figure walking from one place to the other and you can see almost a table at one place that didn't belong there earlier but it, as the smoke clears around you you're in a room a large gray stone room at the center of which there is a table a round table made of thick oak varnished wood this thing is immaculate with intricate designs in it so this huge stone, this huge stone room is decorated with several colored banners along the walls and heraldry that you don't recognize with different sort of fabrics that you don't recognize. And what's more alarming, the most interesting thing in the room that catches your eye immediately are seven f- uh, full armored knights, each in armor that seems too perfect, too immaculate for anything. And each one wears a tabard with different colors on, with different animals, with different heraldry, as they raise their swords above this round table. At which part, the guy at the head of the table, there is a king with a crown that is easily denoting his station and a large full beard as he raises his sword above the rest. It gleams with a pleasant white light. And she says, heroes belong. The Pythia speaks through this and you can see the crow's feet on her eyes and the tint in her tone of her skin begin to gray a little. And she just says, heroes are not often chosen. Heroes do not often come when we need them. Heroes sometimes have their for- fates forced upon them. See here how they exist and they will exist and they have existed before. And the smoke surrounds her and fills the room again, filling this room with a sweet incense as the image of these seven knights around the round table fades and the smoke begins to pull around again. The room feels warmer. It's not long before you see a glint of the sun that's approaching the dome overhead, shining through the smoke. You can see it in the, in the sort of the sky as though 
the smoke begins to fade away again and the blue of the sky beams down and you're in a fabulous garden full of roses, carnations, rhododendrons, sweet smelling flowers, a floral sort of perfume scent on your nostrils as it flows away and you can feel the warmth of the air. You're in some pleasant country um, that you don't really recognize as this garden is filled with this strange, it seems like macerated stone that you're sitting on, uh, almost like a gravelly sort of way as you look across and in the garden there's not but three people these three people are all dressed the same they look very strange as though no kind of clothing you've seen before blue tabards adorn each one of them but their clothes is different from the people you saw before they're more cloth based and each one of them raises a sword and crosses them together with the other and they seem to be thin swords these ones thinner than you'd ever seen used for poking of some kind an unusual design that doesn't belong in this earth she says, heroes form bonds of fellowship and they change the world. You must learn to be like them as they have learned to be like you. All have been visited upon this vision. All will see that heroes belong in every timeline, every possible reality. And the smoke just immediately envelops you again as though it's being poured on you from the sky and it pools out around you. Now I take you back instead of forward. And I will show you what happens if you fail. And um, she looked to you, actually, um, Antigonus, as the one who's been most vocal about being her protector. She throws a handful of sand up, as though she got it from nowhere, into the middle of the circle. Roll me a 1d4. <coughs> Four. Two. All right, so, two, two you yes. She's to, she's to, she says uh, to him, the, she doesn't say to, but this, the um, goes northeast. It goes east, the sand. It gets blown east. And she says, there are threats in the world in every direction. To the east, you see. And she closes her eyes, and then the smoke puffs out. And you see a battlefield full of hoplites. All of them dead and rotting, collapsing each other in giant piles. And through them, you see a single figure in a dark blue robe walking, hand on one orb and his other, guiding his way with his eyes closed through mounds of corpses on the outside of giant stone walls. You don't see anything that denotes exactly where you are, but thousands upon thousands of dead soldiers, Greek and Trojan, must be here. The ship, the, sh the shoreline not far away, is lined with dozens and dozens of triremes, huge Greek ships of different areas of the Greek kingdoms. But this man walks through and every time he walks, people start crawling. Corpses start dragging themselves behind him as they all sort of make his way to him as though he's some sort of sickening Pied Piper making his way along this orb glowing in his right hand as these things crawl behind him. Some of them finally dragging themselves to their feet as they work around and he continues to make his way deeper into the battlefield and you lose sight of him behind a pile of corpses and then suddenly the smoke envelops you again and the Pythias looks to one of you to the other you can see her eyes are gray now her hair is gray her skin is gray the wrinkles forming on her skin she smiles but her teeth are yellowed and suddenly the smoke goes entirely on your back in the temple room with Hesia the Pythia and Aquilus but before the smoke disappears entirely she looks to each of you and says Please tell Aquilus one thing. He served me well, and this is no fault of his. <coughs> but this is everything I had to show you. This I'm gonna move towards her immediately, expecting her to fall. Yeah, as you approach her immediately, you grab her, and it's not like the sort of well-fed, supple body you knew her to have. It's skin and bones it's almost like what you'd expect herodotus to feel like she weighs nothing and she looks up at you and she just you can see her eyes aren't focused they're completely milky white what was the lie <laughs> i don't think there was one not in this message <clears throat> the lie is that i would be taken back to delphi i'm not going anywhere from here this is where i leave you and then she'll just lean her head back and it instantly just goes limp in your grip there, Larkin, as you feel the Pythia's body just tilt back. And as she tilts back, something you didn't notice there before is there now. A woman of thick blonde hair stands behind the Pythia. 
She gives you a knowing smile as though she's seen you before. And she just look, tilts her head one side to the other with you as she reaches down and takes one strand of the Pythia's thick, wispy, oh, sorry, thick and wispy, thin, wispy white hair and raises a rusty pair of shears while looking at you. And then she ru- pulls the shears to the Pythia's hair and lets out a single... I st- dive at her when this happens. I dive at the, at the blonde woman as this is so, occurring. As you dive at the blonde woman, you approach her and you just seem to pass straight through her. And she doesn't even leave her gaze from Larkin. As you just pass through one, it seems to be an incorporeal form. And she just lets this single strand cr- sort of crawl across the blade. And you can see it, even though it's one bit of hair, splintering already. And she, she lets the, the uh, shears close. And the Pythia is dead. And she just put, and then this woman fades backwards into the darkness. And it's as though she was never there at all. And with the Pythia dead, you are now fully back in the temple room and the incense just pours out of the door past Aquilus and into the night sky. You're left there in the incense burned out room. The brazier's now dimly lit again with the dead Pythia in your arms, Larkin. And Hestia sort of nods her head slowly and puts it down as though she was fully aware that this would happen. Do I get the sense that like everybody could see that blonde? Yeah, could we see her? Uh, you all could see her. Okay. Can okay. I do like any knowledge checks of religion? Obviously, uh... religion check. You certainly can. <coughs> Whoever wants to. Is that face clear to me in any way? Oops. Okay. No, no. Uh, oh, it's twelve. Yeah. Is she is she familiar in any way, Harry? Mm. Uh, you have to make a religion check to find out. But if from for 20 actual for, facial recognition, uh, twenty-two. Twenty-two is very good. Nineteen. Um, okay, some pretty good rolls going on. Mine was a seven. Okay, seven. Yeah. I let it go to the people who've got it, the information going on that uh, popular Greek mythology um, dictates that uh, when a person dies, their hair, the strand of hair is cut by one of the three fates. So it stands to reason those who hold the shears are the fates. Whether or not there are all three of them there or just the one, it would seem like just the one. Yaling will go to her knees next to the oracle. I'm just <sighs> holding her silently at this point. I never got to ask my question. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. I never got to ask my question. I was promised one. Mm. At this sort of outburst, and sorry, go ahead. You go ahead, Antigonus, because I think uh, Antigonus happening. just slams the ground with his fist and and uh, says, "You can serve gods all your lives, and you end up with the same fate. What does it matter?" And this sort of outburst from both of you. Uh, Aquilus realized that you're all back in sort of consciousness as you'd all seem to be sitting completely still in a sort of trance to him um, until now. As he sort of turns around, um, looks from one of you to the other and sees you're holding this... Um, so the red cloak is familiar, but the face that believe it is not. As he walks over, he says, what's going on? What's happened? Why are you not, holding her like that? I'm not Stand joking. Stand aside! This time... She's... Move! And he'll just grab you, Larkin, and he'll throw you to the side as the Pythia's, like, limp body lips force the floor as he leans down over it. It's can just... I slap him for throwing Larkin? You can certainly try. So, yeah. Um, he won't see it coming. He's too up to think, um, you know, to focus on what he's doing. So, you know, it will, you'll, it's an automatic success. Okay, that's, don't that's, worry about rolling. that's He's that's not great. going to try and dodge you at this point. Because I rolled in that one, <laughs> so <laughs> that's good. <laughs> he just his teeth. Yeah, he accidentally so, slap Herodotus. Yeah, he just grits his teeth and looks over at you, but he's, he's just too focused on what's happening in front of him. And he just grabs her and shakes her. Wake up! Wake up, damn you! Be gentle. Curse you! What have you done? How did you do this? We didn't do anything. She, she chose to do this. I, I don't know why, don't know how, but... She told us to tell you you served her well. Do you think we would kill the person who my friend died to protect? Be a soldier. Get out of here. And if you touch my sister again, you won't be able to serve anyone. Well, stand up, and this guy's about as tall as Antigonus. Uh, in his full armor, but he just looks disheveled and his eyes are filled with tears. But Hesse, the priestess, will talk up as well and say, let's they speak the truth. She told me the same thing. She said that she would not survive this. She said it would request all her power. Please, please, sir, do not, do not blame this. He'll just look from where he told you that and you let her anyway. 
It's she, she, she insisted. She told me not to tell you. But with this, I course, look from one of you to the other and say, I don't know what to do. <laughs> That's all I could do. Curse you. Curse you, Bythea. And um, he'll stand up and he'll storm out of the room. But that's, I think, good, probably a good place to end the session for this week on Pantheon. Ooh, mm. intense. <coughs> yeah. Why would, he, why would he curse her? That's my thought. Just yeah, probably just a bit of Who's in love? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and why didn't I get my question? <laughs> yeah, ample time to get your question out <laughs> to the Pythia at some I, point. I was like, I'm going to save it for a good moment. Oh, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> the old, I've got a thousand lose. Yes. Exactly oh my goodness. Like the philosophy <laughs> between like, I've got a million health potions, I'll just save them until the end of the campaign. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> probably use your good stuff at some point. <laughs> God damn it. But I hope everyone enjoyed it. I mean, are we still live, right? We're still got people. Yeah, we're still live, yeah. Thanks, Great. guys. Yeah, we're going on a roller coaster with us. So, <laughs> hectic session, but yeah, cool. Good fun. <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much, everybody, for you and, you know, I always appreciate it. Love it all. But yeah, and love you all. Perfect. Cheers, guys. Uh, tomorrow, as we said, we've got Hemlora. So we <laughs> hopefully see you all for that. And. Mm -hmm. Again, thank you to everyone that subbed tonight. All the new, you know the new people that have joined. You know we hope you stick around and and enjoy more from this show and more from obviously the other shows that we do as well, which is obviously Aeroff and Ham Laura. Um, yeah, hop on the Discord to learn more. Yeah. Come hang out. Yeah, definitely. Join yeah. the community. Come say hi, and we'll we'll you know where to find us. Yeah. Cool. All right. Cheers, guys. See you and later, everybody. See you later. Bye. Bye.